Okay, guys, welcome today. Uh, thank you for coming along, taking time out of your Sunday instead of going to church and coming along, listening to me. So everything today is for entertainment purposes. So I'm going to be doing a stand-up comedy. Okay, so how they entrapped us in the system is quite interesting because the whole system is based on presumptions. Now, if you don't know what presumptions are, get on your phone. They presume that you know your rights. Now, if you don't know your rights, I can assure you, you've got none. So what I'm going to be sharing with you today, and you will be sharing with everyone, is because the moment that you start sharing, more information comes down to you. It's the way the universe works. So the more you give out, so if you're going to give shit to people, you're going to get shit dumped back on you. But if you give good, whatever you give out will come back to you. So the presumption is that you don't know your rights, and I'll guarantee you don't. By the end of the day, you will realise just how much you don't. So this is how we became entrapped. This is a bit of a pain, but um, yeah. Baby is born in the delivery room. Is that right, ladies? And so if you watch Billy's Basics, you'll know what the crown is, won't you? You know what the crown is? The first part that appears from the, from mum? And it says, delivery, the transferring of possession from one person to another. That's where they get us, right there in the delivery room. They transfer possession from mum to nanny state. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. Okay. This is such a serious subject. If I don't make light of it, you'll all walk out of here depressed. And so I'll take, I'll take the piss out of everyone and make it a bit more fun. Okay, so ward, a child who is pursuant to a court order or administrative action. They wheel you off to the ward. Now you are being administered by the state. And if you listen to Donald Trump, every time he said, not under my administration. So the trust that they formed, the CDK Vi trust that was formed, is under administration. So your birth certificate is actually your death certificate. If you want the live born one, it is the printout. For those of you who haven't seen one, I'll give you one. There. Can you, can you see? It's my fat ass in the way most of the time. Okay, but there's some tricks on here. In that one, in that column there, it says, if child, if child is still born, put the name in that column. So the stillborn is entered in there. Okay, now this is actually a copy of what happens in the register. You'll see it's all handwritten in, but if you look here, you'll see that there's two little lines there. They fold over part of the page in the book and only give you half the information. They hide the rest. Okay, that is so that you don't know the full story. Now, when I got this, it helped me to crack the code. Now, the reason to help me to crack the code was I had a couple of friends, yep, good man. Yep, that's the one. What happened was um, I grabbed a couple of my mates who shall remain nameless, and we went down to birth, deaths, and marriages, and I said, we're going to get the live born, in America, it's a live born certificate. But all we could get here was the birth certificate. And the Americans kept referring to the live born one. So we went down there and the three of us were lined up, each on a different counter. And the lady said, didn't have a clue what we were talking about. And then this one um, island lady says, oh, I wonder if it's this. So she went out <clears throat> and she comes back with an A3. You all know what an A3 is? Okay. Good, I don't have to explain everything. 
Okay. Came out with an A3 page with this on it. And I said, that's it. That's what we're looking for. So the two guys who I was with, they got theirs on there. And I said, what about mine? Oh, we're going to have to go to Wellington for yours. Oh, <laughs> okay. Two weeks later, I got mine in the mail. Theirs was on A3 standard paper. This is 2011, guys. 2011. <clears throat> mine came on security paper A4. Bingo, the lights went off. All of a sudden, I realized the same as a birth certificate, that's a security. But it's not a certificate, and there's a big difference between a certificate and um, it says here, oh, sorry, this is not a certificate. We've had ours certified to make it a certificate, but I went through every word on that, and I broke it down, and I did a, I did a seminar in Browns Bay back in 2011, and I was 20 years ahead of myself. The, the, people, the people in the room just <laughs> didn't have a clue. So anyway, that was, that was the first one. Vinny Eastwood put it up on his channel, um, I Declare I'm Free, I think it's called. You, you can still go back and look at that original one that I did back in 2011. While you people were blissfully asleep watching the telly. Okay, now, informant. A person who supplies information. Now, you'll always hear the police say, we've got an informant. That's how they lay the charges, is with the informant. But if you have a look over there, you'll see my birth date was on the 3rd of March. Just gone, just gone. So all those who didn't give me presents, I don't know. It's all right. Late presents accepted, you know. But have a look there. There's another date. That is my birth date. Now, if we look at um, if we look at birth, how does it sound? Oh. You see, we're a vessel. Oh. <laughs> Just plan up for the cameras. He he thought I was camera shy. Okay, so can we see that a bit clearer? Yeah. Okay, so we are a vessel. We hold water. So they birthed us. And, and if you go back, who's watched the Pirates of the Caribbean movies? <laughs> who's, who's, who's the best character in it? Turner. <laughs> Bootstrap Bill Turner. Okay, I didn't wear my pirate hat today. but um, Okay, so they birthed the vessel into the system. And, and once you learn to look at every word. Don't take any word at face value because in their system, it's a private company and every word has a different meaning and that's why you have law dictionaries. Actually, this one here was one of my best buys. Would you read out how much that cost me? It cost me a bloody fortune. I go around op shops and four dollars for that one. That's a really you can see. I mark all the pages with all the words that matter, and that's a New Zealand law dictionary. So their private company copyrights all the words, and if you use those words, you are using their just the same as if you. When, when you really look at things, you will see that A4 is legal paper. That's theirs. Our size is false cap. <laughs> Fools cap is slightly bigger, and that's our system. 
So if you want to stay in the private, you've got to use full scale. Um, their font is uh, Times New Roman. Uh, 11.5. Okay, so when you read the court documents, they will all be Times New Roman 11.5. So use any other font, uh, any other font except Times New Roman. Okay, so we were birthed into the system because we are a vessel. We hold water, and so they birthed us into the system. That's my birth date there. The 15th. So if ever you're going to be filling out forms, and I'll, I'll explain forms in the next segment, if ever you're going to be filling out forms, you might want to remember the difference between the born date and the birth date. Okay, because we're in a de facto relationship with a dead bastard. Okay. So, grab your licenses, guys. Grab your licenses. Okay, so let's have a look. You will see on your license that the surname is separate. Can you all see that? We always have a smart ass in the class. Okay. They don't hide it. it. That's the dead one there. That's the living one below it. Like I said, the dead one, the dead one, the birth date was the 15th of March. The living one was the 3rd of March. Okay. That's the photo of the living What's the other photo? The opaque one, which will be out to the right on yours. That's the dead bastard. That's the dead one there. The one out to the right, the opaque one, is the dead one. Opaque means like a toilet window. You can't see through it. So that's dead. So now you have the father, the son, and hiding in behind there is the Holy Ghost. They, they tell you this in the good book. The father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the set of K trust there. Okay, a trust was set up in the name of the Father. So when we use the Father's name, that's why they keep it separate. The moment you use that name, bang, you're in contract with them. If you use the last name, all, all I was given was William Henry. Okay, but the state gave me a surname. So if you use any surname, doesn't matter what it is, any surname, you are now the dead. You're standing up as trustee for the trust. Is that clear? The born date, my born date I showed you there, was the 3rd of March. And that was, that was in the very first column. But actually, I'll, I'll, I'll go back. Whew. Hold on, I'll just. <laughs> in the first column here, you'll notice a number, 668. That's called the entry number. Now, it, it doesn't show very clearly on that one, but I've got another one that I can show you where it says entry date. So entry is where they entered our property. The name is the property, and they entered our property there. Okay, so in this one, oh, sorry, in here, when born and where born. 
Okay, that that was the date that I was born, St Helens Hospital. But down here, when registered, okay, a different date. That's the birth date. Um, it is, but it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. The reason I'm showing you this is to show you how the system operates, and and how when you know these things, you know that you're not the surname. If you look at your license, you will see that the surname is separate to the given names. Your parents only gave you names, and if you use those names, you stay on the private side of the ledger. But the moment you use the surname, you duck into their public fool system. No, that's where we were educated, wasn't it? The public fool system. What I'm empowering you with is knowledge. Okay? What you do with that, <coughs> the information that I give you, is totally up to you. But with this knowledge, <coughs> and I do say, be careful. Be careful. Don't go out there half cocked like I did and take on the inland revenue. <laughs> I picked on the best one to take on first. And I did suffer the consequences, I must admit. But I'm empowering you to empower yourself and then other people by sharing the information freely. If you, everyone has got a piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Every one of you here today has a piece of the jigsaw puzzle. But unless you step up freely and put your piece into the puzzle, the puzzle will never be completed. So it's up to you to share that information freely with other people to help them. You're part of the volunteers. You saw that. By the way, that is freely available, that volunteers, on YouTube. Okay, so feel free to go into YouTube and download that. <clears throat> it's called the Volunteers um, Telepathic Version. Okay, so hopefully by the end of the day, you will, your head will be full of knowledge and you'll be as confused as ever. We, we all have telepathic... <laughs> yeah, we all have telepathic abilities. When you fine-tune them, and actually practice, the more you practice anything, the better you become. So the more you practice being silent and using two ears and one mouth, and when you use them in that order, you'll find you learn more. It's, it's a real special ability, listening. Okay, so we're going to start off in your books now. You'll, you'll see books in front of you... Um, and when I bring these up, you will see places that you have to fill in. So the hierarchy of the law is that God comes first. Okay, so you can all write God in there. God created man. And then he got his revenge on man by creating woman, but... Um, <laughs> She don't, I'm going to have to run the gauntlet. <laughs> I'm going to get bitch slapped all the way out of here. <laughs> okay, and then man created corporations. Now, whenever a corporation comes to you, a corporation is merely a bit of paper. That's all it is. It was created by man. It's a piece of paper. And you guys are afraid of paper. You think the paper is real. All it is is an offer to contract whenever a bit of paper comes your way. And so hopefully by the end of the day, you will, ne you will not walk out of here without having this indelled upon your brain. 
Now, you people who can't see, feel free to come up here and grab a, a, a photo of this because this is really important. The rules of contract are never argue, never agree, and never go silent. Go, no, no, grab your, grab your phone and get a photo. If anyone walks out of here today without knowing those three simple rules, I've failed. So I'm going to indel it upon your brains, tattoo it to the inside of your eyelids so that every time you close your eyes, you see, never argue. What's the first thing any of these people do? I'm just coming over this way so that you can all get your phones up there and come, feel free to come right in here. Once you know these rules, you will never go into contract again. The first thing they, a cop on the side of the road or any government agency will do is try and get you into argument. That's not me. I wasn't speeding. They need, they need you to argue, agree or go silent. The moment you do, you're in contract. People go on about the different laws. They go on about common law, L-O-R-E, maritime law, and all the different laws. There is only one law that overrides everything, and that is contract law. Nothing is higher than contract. And if you go into if you go into the high court, you will see 90% of their business is settling disputes of contracts. So when you understand that, forget about all the bullshit that they try and run you. You can hear. Do you have a bleep button on you? <laughs> bleep. Every, every dispute virtually in the high court is about a contract. Someone has breached a contract, but I'll show you how to avoid contract with those three simple rules. And when you, when you know that, everything else pales into insignificance. Now, yesterday I had a few uh, people and did a session with them. And these, these are going to be the people that if any one of you wants to learn how to write letters or to avoid contract or anything like that, these people have passed the baton over to them and you can go to see them. They're all hiding in the corner there so that they can't be seen. <laughs> and we're not going to turn the spotlight on them and show them, but... <laughs> okay, so... Corporation is plain and simply a piece of paper. Now, a couple of years ago, I was down in Dunedin where I'm going next. Uh, oh, I had a, had a word with the horse. <laughs> and I said, listen, listen, on the 5th of April, I'm heading down to um, Dunedin. And I don't want to do any of this up your nose, bloody bullshit. Um, so can you clear the way to have me go down there? So just, just like that, she lifted all restrictions. I can go down there and I don't have any... <laughs> it's amazing what you put out to the universe, what happens, okay? I thought, oh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it stuck here. And I'd promised my son that I'd tow his car down there. So... Um, <laughs> So anyway, I was, I was a little bit concerned. Oh, shit, I'm going to have to hop on the ferry and um, I'm going to be... We should PCR test. What was it? What is it? Rat test. Yeah. You notice they've got all these fancy names and words that they bring out and the public watching this 6 o'clock news jump onto these and they latch onto them and next thing they're on, talk back and they're all designed... They're all designed to get you arguing. Number one rule, never argue. Okay, so 
Now that we know it's a piece of paper, when anything comes over our desk or through our uh, letterbox, it's a bit of paper. Now, I started off to tell you that uh, I don't get sidetracked much, but um, the last time I was down in Dunedin, I go around and look at old statues and old buildings and look for the signs. Now, I found, I found an obelisk in Dunedin, and there was a little plaque on it presented to the corporation of the city of Dunedin. I've got it on my phone there, but um, I'm afraid to pull it out, and other, otherwise you might scroll through and find photos you're not supposed to. So, <laughs> um, the corporation of the city of Dunedin. Okay, so how did the city of Auckland become empowered? The Museum Empowering Act is where the city of Auckland was empowered to become a corporation. So all these things are only corporations, but at the end of the day, they're only bits of paper. And when you know your rights and when you know what they're doing, sorry, for those over the other side, you can rebut all their presumptions. Now, that word will come up quite a lot, presumptions. Okay, you can rebut all their presumptions. Just, I, I, I'm, I'm pleased, Mega, um, Kim.com, uh, you know, he gets vilified. Whenever someone gets vilified, they're the good guys. Okay, and the reason he got vilified was what happened was that he was in Hong Kong doing very well for himself. John Key got tasked with getting him to immigrate to New Zealand. There's no arrest warrant between America and Hong Kong. Okay, why did they want him arrested? He had an encryption so good the FBI and the CIA could not crack it. His encryption was so good they had to steal it because he wouldn't give it to them. The guy's a legend. Okay, he's an absolute legend. His encryption system, the only way that they cracked it was they came and they made him a citizen of New Zealand, then the Americans could arrest him. That raid was absolutely nothing, never seen anything like that in New Zealand ever before or since. And they stole his computers and got his encryption system. I feel sorry for the guy. He's such a good guy. So whenever you see anyone vilified like that, it's because they're the good guys. The, the guy down in um, Christchurch, um, I gave him one of my letters. Uh, do you all know that? What's, what's in it? Lotus Heart. Yep. Lotus Heart Restaurant. Do you all know about Lotus Heart Restaurant? couple of real good guys, one over here who, uh, who had this place, and the guy from the Lotus Heart down in Christchurch, um, through someone else, I gave him the letter. I don't, I don't like to be um, the public face of anything. All I do is give information out, so I don't want people worshipping me or anything like that. No, I don't. All I want is you to come up to the same level, Okay. This guy sent them a letter, and not a French one. <laughs> Work safe, totally stuffed. Nothing they could do. So what do they do? They set their controlled opposition against them, which is called Now we're going to embarrass the living shit out of you on public TV and make you look like a fool so that you comply. And that's what they do every time. They get their media controlled. I won't use that uh, S word. But that's what they do. Okay, so um, I do get... Uh, I do get sidetracked, guys, but um, 
Okay, so everything is about the cross. Everything is about the cross because we have a living side and a dead side, but the, the cross is all about the double entry bookkeeping. So Jesus was hung on the cross and under the New Testament, it's all about forgiveness. The Old Testament, which Jesus probated, and some people still live under the Old Testament. Good luck with that. The Old Will and Testament was probated. Jesus brought in the New Testament. There is a New Testament. We moved into the age of Aquarius in 2012, and it's been this long trying to fight the evil ones off so that it can properly come in. But someone has already probated the Old Will and Testament, which in your speak is the New Testament, but there is a New Testament in place now, and I believe there's uh, 770, uh, oh no, sorry, 77 books, something like that, or 777, yeah, it's 777 books, something like that anyway, in the New Testament, which is their new rule book for this age of Aquarius, and Everyone who um, doesn't realise we're under the age of we're under the age of Pisces. You always saw the fishes on the back of the bumper stickers. That's the age of Pisces. But the Pope came out in 2013 and said we've moved into the new age. You all remember that, don't you? And he said anyone operating our old system, he said, you no longer have immunity. He warned them. Our age is gone. The new age is a totally new system. So all the ones who had protection under the age of Pisces no longer have that protection. He told them that in 2013, and that was when we moved into the, um, into the new age. So on the other side of the ledger, sorry, <laughs> I moved pretty quick. On the other side of the ledger are all the bits of paper. The ones that you're afraid of, the bits of paper. Well, sometimes you get paper cuts from paper, but that's about the most damage that they can do. <laughs> the best thing you can do with a piece of paper is wipe something with it. <laughs> okay. Now, we're all aware of the crown because we watched Billy's Basics as our basic homework. The jester stole his thorny crown. Okay? That's where they switched everything. Not only in the delivery room, but all the other places. They switched so that we still believe that we are that surname. But the crown, they are only agents for the crown. Every one of them. Okay, so the birth certificate, everything on that side of the ledger, everything on that side of the ledger is dead. And the moment you realize that the piece of paper ain't going to hurt you, it ain't going to hurt you, that piece of paper. Just watch Watch the paper cuts, that will. A whole new world comes into being because corporations can only deal with entities. So if you step up as that entity, which is the surname. One lady was listening. Thank you. Who was it? Oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Someone was listening. I, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> they can only deal with entities, trusts, the crown. Who's the crown? You go and watch a bloody video. <laughs> it's not. It's the birth certificate. Haven't you watched Billy's Basic? Eh? No, you're talking about the triple cut. Have you watched Billy's Basics? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, sir? What's that, sir? 
You mean? No, you haven't watched it. Okay. The crown is the first part of the baby that appears. And while the king was looking down, the jester stole his thorny crown and gave you a birth certificate. Okay? The crown is a fiction. It got stolen from us. And if you go to the good book, the good book tells you that the twins in the womb were fighting for the birthright. Okay? What were the twins in the... We had the placenta and us, the twins. Which came first? Now, in that one, I actually give you... So I'm pleased you did your homework. Romans 9:11. No, it's all it's all in the Bible. You just got to you've just got to crack their code and, and see what's happening. Uh, no, some people just come out first, you know. Um, some some people are just here. And it's it's a generalization. Okay, just so that you, um, and and what I'm what I'm trying to get people to see is because straight away you go into argument. Uh, there was a lady up there saying, "Oh, what about my married name?" You're saying, "What about this?" It's all argument. That's what they design every system around is argument. All I'm giving you is information. Do with it what you want. I'm not going to jump in your head. Okay? You process it the way you want to. And you come up with your answers. All right? And I'm not going to make a, make a public spectacle of you either. Okay, so all they can deal with is fictions. Okay. Corporations. Now, who has seen The Wizard of Oz? Good movie. It wasn't, except it wasn't a movie. They were telling you what they were doing. <laughs> Thought I'd sneak one in. <laughs> okay, The Wizard of Oz. What's that short for? Why are babies still measured in ounces? You're worth your weight in gold. Oh. Oh. You're worth your weight in gold, guys. The Wizard of Oz. What was the yellow brick road? The gold road. Where did it lead to, to, to the treasury where there was... Voices coming out until Toto opened the curtain and exposed the whole system, which is exactly what I'm doing. Okay? But there was also a tin man. Text identification number. There was a lion. What was wrong with the lion? No courage. Which is what you guys are. You've got no courage. They're telling you all these things in the movies. Okay? But they also had the straw man. What is the surname? Before the break, we were looking at a movie called The Wizard of Oz. Once again, full disclosure of what was going to happen from 1933 on was where they took away the gold standard from us. They took the gold off every person. They even took it out of their teeth, and they took the gold away from everyone. And it was explained in that movie, The Wizard of Oz, Ounces, Gold, 
that from this stage forward, all we would have as a medium of exchange would be paper. So everything is paper. And when you know how to deal with paper, different things happen. So they created the straw man from the dead placenta. The placenta, when the placenta died, the doctor puts his stethoscope on the placenta and says there is no sign of life. From two living beings within the womb of mum, one lives and one dies. But if you remember 9-11, go look at Romans 9-11. Those of you who watched <laughs> Billy's <laughs> Basics will know this, and I don't take the piss out of anyone. Which, anyone. Which <laughs> I told you, I told you, I told you it's just a code book and when you go directly, you get given the direct answers. You've got to be careful what you ask for because I asked once and I had an out-of-body experience and that's what really, totally turned me from a corporate animal into a, a spiritual being. Okay, so fifth dimension is only a state between the ears. Now, a lot of you are getting up to that fifth dimension stage, and that's what they're worried about. The moment you get up to that fifth dimension, you have a built-in bullshit meter. <laughs> you can see straight through them. <laughs> but don't believe a word I say. Go directly to source. Not what is tomato sauce, but directly to sauce. Okay, so when the placenta died, they issued a birth certificate. How did we spell it? B-E-R? Birth certificate for the dead placenta, which became the crown. The birth certificate is under administration. It has a different date to the born date. You've seen it on your license. And if you want to prove this to yourself, go online and look up your your QCIP number and you'll find that every number that you have been given, <laughs> do your own research, Kath. QCIP number, some call it cusp, call it what you want, it's, uh, it's just information. But your license, your, your printout, your birth certificate, your passports, everything has a number and they're all trading. The last time I looked at, looked at my birth certificate, there was five billion in there. Oh, yours, yours will probably be a lot more. I, I write bonds and um, so I've used... <laughs> I'm very generous with my bonds. A lot of people don't realise what happened back in about two, 2013. Around about 2013, or no, it might have been later than that, I can't remember, but Len Brown was the mayor of Auckland and he wanted to do the central rail link and John Key wouldn't give him the money. So me, me being the generous person that I am, I wrote him a bond for 500 million. About three months later in the paper, there was a small article, Len Brand can now start the, the Central Rail Link, he's been given 500 million. So, okay. I, if you wonder why I walk like that, <laughs> I did promise a stand-up comedian show, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. There's one of my bonds. Now that goes on to the back of a birth certificate. Ah. <laughs> yeah. You forgot my name. It's Willie, not silly. <laughs> okay, but if, if I do anything, I do it professionally because 
I was an aircraft engineer. I used to keep the planes up there um, for Air New Zealand. Um, so I come from a very structured background. I worked for Qantas in Australia. Uh, I used to balance the engines there. At Air New Zealand, I used to test the engines. So if you fly in Air New Zealand back then, I kept you up there. So um, I do everything very structured. And so when I, if I'm going to do something like a bond or that, I do it very professionally. Uh, just, just my nature, I guess. But anyway, back to the dead placenta. The Wizard of Oz explained all about the straw man because prior to the 1930s, you didn't need passports. You didn't need birth certificates. Or, although they kept records, most people kept the records in their own family Bible. But from the 1930s on when they introduced... Now, if, if you go to the code book, which is the Bible, they tell you it's 7 times 7 times 7. So 49 years, and then in the 50th year is the Jubilee. So that went from uh, 18... 83, 1933, 1983. So every 50 years, they have to bring in a new system. Now, the private companies have a habit of going into administration a couple of years after they're formed. Now, they won't go bankrupt. People say they're bankrupt. They're not. If you go bankrupt, you've got to sell off all the family jewels and, and form a new company. They go into administration, so they have administrators. Why do you think we, used, we still do have a chief administrator? It used to be Sean Elias. For, for years and years, it was Sean Elias. She was the chief judge and chief administrator. Okay, so she is administering the trust account set up in your name, which is... The straw man. All those trust accounts set up in the name of the Father are being administered. Does, does that make it a bit clearer or not? Okay. So it's only a piece of paper, but it's under administration. When you're in a situation like this, there's so much information coming at you and your mind's working overtime and you will have to go through, I know uh, when I was doing my law papers, I would have to read through something once and I go, what the? <laughs> and then I'd read through, and, oh, I remember that bit. I'd go through it again, and I'd remember a bit more. And gradually, after I'd been through it five or six times, I suddenly got the gist of it. But then I realized that there is a totally different way to look at things. So once... Once I went from the ego world to the spiritual world, everything became a lot more clear. And so when you're, when you're still in your ego phase and you haven't risen to the fifth dimensional state, you will see things very differently. Once you move into the fifth dimensional state, you'll realize it's not about money. It's about everyone waking up and that collective consciousness will tip the system over. So the dead placenta is what they're administering. As I said, you can go through and have a look at the QCIP numbers and you will see how much you're earning. Ah. Um, I'll actually, I'll, I'll give, you don't really need it. It's just information. Uh, okay, I got mine, I paid... Um, from memory, about 350 American dollars to get a trader to give it to me. You can go online. I can show you. I can show you the website online um, where you can get it from. But you don't really need it. It's just information. What what I'm trying to get through to you is I'll give you all this information. It's just information. I've done all the hard work, and at, in, this afternoon. I will show you how to write a letter where you can bat all these people out. 
you don't need you don't need your printouts and all that sort of thing. It's good to see them and to see the separation, but you don't need them. I've done all the hard work for you. I've dedicated over 20 years of learning this shit. <laughs> okay, so we're all clear that when the king was looking down, the jester stole his thorny crown. The courtroom was adjourned. No verdict was returned. Good old, good old Don McLean, another... Um, Okay, that's the dead placenta. It's a fiction, it's the crown, and it is the birth certificate. So any, any corporation, which is a piece of paper, guys, which is a piece of paper that has agents of the crown working for it, and that's the hard part to get your head around. Some clown out here was telling me it's the Corporation of the City of London and all that sort of, all just, all distractions. Look over here while over here the magician's doing that. Okay, they're all distractions to get you looking that way. What happened in Wellington was a distraction for what was happening up in Wangarei. So you've got to, you've got to realise, once you get to the fifth dimensional state of mind. You read through all the bullshit. Has it made it clearer? Or is anyone unsure of what the crown is? <laughs> okay, just understand the crown is a piece of paper. The crown is a birth certificate and it has an army of civil servants working for it who are called agents. So who's watched The Matrix? What's that about? Agents. Agent Smith. But in the new Matrix, the ladies finally step up and it's so good to see so many ladies here. For too long you've been walking behind us and now you're stepping up as equals. Congratulations, ladies. I could only talk to men, oh, with, with the odd exception. With the odd exception. Not saying you're odd. <laughs> There were a few who woke up earlier. There are others who are still arguing. <laughs> but it's good to see so many ladies. One workshop I did down country, 90% women, 10% men. That was so rewarding to finally see the ladies <laughs> Growing a pair. Yeah, I think I think they're just scaredy cats myself. But <laughs> finally, they're getting the balls to stand up, which is great. Love it, absolutely love it. And now it's your job to empower more people. So. We're quite clear on the crown now, aren't we? <laughs> Thank you. Otherwise, I love computers. You only punch the information in once. The whole system is run from Rome. But Rome is run from underground. Okay? So... So, has anyone watched um, uh, Men in Black? That's a documentary. <laughs> it's a documentary. It's not, honestly, 
they're showing you that there are more than humans walking around. Some of them may be deep underground. But <laughs> some of them some of them can cloak. Some of them have masks. <laughs> as, as a living man, we need to know, and this is the key to the whole thing, is our status. If you don't know what your status is, then you don't know your rights. And if you don't know your rights, you've got none. So what I'm going to be showing you today is our status. Now, I've already shown you Right at the beginning, who came first? <laughs> who was that cheeky little? Okay, so the status is that we are above corporations, but for some reason, we keep putting them in the place of God. They are below us. The agents, as Agent Smith will tell you, when he first started dodging the bullets and then he learned how to stop the bullets. I'll show you that today. How to absolutely stop them in their tracks. And if you guys don't start doing this, every time you take a step back, they come 10 steps forward. So it's up to you guys. I'm empowering you to empower others to wake up and get your shit together. Okay, so we need to know our status. You've all written that down. I can see that. Yeah, I don't have to remind anyone. Who do agents act for? The crown. The crown. Okay, now, once you understand, this is what our status is. They're only agents. And the good part I told you in the, in the new Matrix movie we have women agents. They're telling you the women are rising. Agents swear on the Bible to uphold statute. Now, if we know our status and we know that they're sworn to uphold status, all we have to do is ask them a couple of questions. It's that simple. There was someone here who was going to... I'm looking for a funny hat. Oh. Okay. <laughs> someone asked me about rebutting... Oh, there, there you are. <laughs> Spotted you. And I won't make a fool of you. No. <laughs> okay. Rebutting. Now, if you don't rebut something, then it stands as fact. Now, what they don't tell you in the courts is, is that an unrebutted... Do you all know about the maxims? Maxims of law? The maxims of law are... They're kind of like... Anything that is a law, the law of gravity, if I drop this, it's going to fall down. Okay? They're set in stone. They can't be changed. Unlike statute, statute only belongs to a private company. The law never changes. That's why we have the maxims at law. And, and this one, this one, go ask any lawyer friend why they have this after their name, LLB. Have you all seen that after a lawyer's name? You ask a lawyer, 95% of them will not know what that means. I can tell you, that is a Bachelor of Law. LB, Bachelor of Law. What's the other L? They get gifted ecclesiastical they get gifted 
an ecclesiastical law degree, but they get taught maybe, if they're lucky, four hours of ecclesiastical law. And they don't even know it. And I asked a very prominent lawyer a few, few months ago, a very colourful lady, 50, 50 shades of grey, um, and she had no idea what the LLB was. Uh, there's quite a big difference. The canons are brought out by the Pope, okay, um, and they have different canons, but the ecclesiastical law is the law that the courts must uphold. Now, when you go into a court, the courts cannot see living. Why is that? Oh, it, it comes up later. Sh shut up, Val. <laughs> 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 Sorry, mate. <laughs> one of my one of my best followers. Uh. Okay, our status when someone comes in as an agent for a trust, a agent principal relationship is developed. Okay, now under the agent principal relationship, now I can see you all reaching for your phones and searching what principal means. Yeah. Okay, I was a real estate agent, so I know I was a real estate agent for 20 years. Does it show? We were told we were the lowest. Principle is the highest. We must follow our principles instructions to the letter of the law. The principle tells us what to do. So we give them an agency agreement and we promise them what we're going to do. And if we don't, we can be sued. Now, under normal circumstances, when we have a trust... Okay, so when we have a trust set up in the name of the Father, or should that be Father? <laughs> Every, everything, everything is about they tell you, they don't hide it. Everything's a spell. They're spelling you. They're using witchcraft. They're using black magic against us. So everything's about spelling. So I do tend to wander off, don't I? Um, the agent principal relationship, or under normal circumstances, we have a beneficial interest in the trust. So it's good to be a Benny. But if an agent comes in, and all through the Pirates movies, they talk about this. Uh, officers. And no rating the spelling uh, on this um, 9 out of 10 or any of that. Okay, so all the way through the Pirates movies, they're talking about commissioned officers. They're telling you that they get a commission if they raise money for the trust. And yet if you go to the 1910 Secret Commissions Act, if you ask them for full disclosure, you totally wipe them out. Because under Section 5 of the Secret Commissions Act, they must disclose if they're getting a commission. 
So if anyone's sending you bills, not this bill, but if anyone's sending you bills, just ask them a simple question. Are you getting a commission? Oops. They're going to have to go quiet. Okay, what law overrides all law? And I actually gave this away a little bit earlier. And you're all writing it down in your books, aren't you? Yeah. Contract law overrides every law. Everything is a contract. So um, they brought out um, employment contracts and that sort of thing. Those laws, as I said earlier, the High Court pretty much exclusively... Okay, contract law overrides the law. Okay. I'm getting better with my... Hey, mate? I'm getting better with my um, presentations, aren't I? Okay. What they use to get us into contract is misrepresentation. Okay? They send it to the father. Now, if you go into court, you will notice that they put it up like this. So they'll have the father's name. First, and then they will have Christian. Unless you're a Jew, then you'll have a Jewish name. <laughs> or if you're mu Muslim, you'll have a Muslim name. No, no, it's not funny. That's real. You ask a Jew, what's your Christian name? My Jewish name is... Yeah. Okay, so... In court... They will always have the father's name first, followed by the Christian names or given names. I prefer given names, actually. It was what your parents gave you. So they're going to use misrepresentation to get us into contract. <laughs> Do you want to know how, that, how I discovered that? Sorry, someone, someone just um, said, do you understand here? So I'll just, um, I'll, I'll just explain how I, I found that out. I found that out in 2005. Okay, back in 2005 I was... Um, I was watching um, 60 Minutes, and um, quite quite handily, last at the last uh, my final workshop last couple of weeks ago, um, there were some people from Waiuku, and I said, I said you, "Anyone from Waiuku here?" Because they take two hours to watch 60 Minutes. But, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. I was watching 60 Minutes and there was a New Zealand author and I honestly can't remember his name. He died a few... You might know this. He, he died a couple of years ago. Um, he took Dan Brown to court. Dan Brown wrote the Da Vinci Code. Now, the guy on 60 Minutes said, um, it said to the New Zealand author, he said, what did the judge say in his summing up? And uh, he said, although, oh, so he said to the New Zealand author, if Dan Brown did not steal your work, it would have been a very short novel. But I must find him not guilty. And, and the interviewer from 60 Minutes said, what? He's admitted he's guilty. And he says, yeah, but the funny thing was, he said, that every time Dan Brown was asked a question, he said, I don't understand the question. Now, the very next day, as luck would happen, I pulled into Pukekohe and I turned left at the roundabout and onto Manukau Road. 
And um, I, was, I was in my bus with, with a trailer on the back and I thought, shit, my tail lights can't be on. So I leapt out, went around, tail lights are on. Okay. So I jumped back in the bus, opened the window. Good afternoon, constable. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, encu- don't encourage me. Jeez, I, <laughs> anyway, he said, do you understand you just cut a car off back there? And I said, no, I don't understand. <laughs> I understand. He said, when you came down the hill, what did you see? I'm, I'm just going to keep pointing to these three things here. He said, what did you see? And I said, I saw a van turning left. Did I argue? Did I agree? Did I go silent? Okay. So he says, when you came down the hill, did you see a sign? I said, yeah. And he said, what was that sign? And I said, give way. So you do understand? I said, no, I don't understand. (laughs) They have three shots at getting you into contract. I never argued, I never agreed, and I never went silent. Ooh, let's change the subject. So he walks around in front. Your warrant's expired. Really? (laughs) So innocent I am. (laughs) He walks around the front. uh, Did I argue? Really? He walks around the front and he comes back. Your rego's expired. I said, gee, I'm getting forgetful. <laughs> walks, ar- walks around and has a look at the Ks. Comes here, your Ks are 20,000 over. And I said, well, I'd better do something about that tomorrow, hadn't I? And he says, yes. Wave me on. Okay, three, lo- three times the first time, three the second time. It's only because... I had divine intervention and learnt what I understand means. Do you stand under me? So if you stand under them, they automatically have contract. But they do it in a tricky way. Dan Brown's lawyers... Sorry. Well, he didn't, but if he had... I would, have, I would have said, what's the presumption? He's presuming that I have to have a driver's license. Now, a lot of people are running around, and, and I won't call them controlled opposition, but they keep saying, I do not consent. I do. Uh, what's it? Oh, free, yeah. The other word say, say is free, D-U-N-D. They operate on presumptions. They operate on the presumption that you don't know your rights. So, mouthing stupid comments instead of instead of asking questions. Or you have sorry. Well, you, you, you're, going to, you're going to find you get yourself into argument if you do that. Okay, so it's better to just ask them, what's the presumption? They're presuming that you don't know your rights, that you don't need a license. I haven't had a license since um, 2015. You saw my license there. Before that expired, I actually surrendered. Um, now... I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. Um, I could never understand the phrase in the good book that said, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, render unto God that which is God's. 
and some of these things just happen to me for some reason. I'm standing in a queue waiting to um, go to the money machine. I pulled out my card and I'm standing there. Bang. Divine intervention. That belongs to Caesar. That belongs to Caesar. And all of a sudden it became clear what render was. So I surrendered. I'm no longer at war with them. I surrendered my passport, my driver's license, everything. I surrendered. I'm no longer at war with them. Be careful. <laughs> Be careful. I know my rights. You'll get yourself into a lot of trouble if you do some of the shit that I do because I'm a crazy bastard. <laughs> And that's why I walked like that. So I surrendered. Now, actually, I might make it three. <laughs> uh, when you come through the border... You come through customs, don't you? Whatever, mate. <laughs> <laughs> At some stage, you go through customs. Once again, it's an abbreviation. What for? Oops. It's an abbreviation. So you have to make a declaration. What are you supposed to clear, declare? I can tell you, it's not a packet of cigarettes and a bottle of wine. You're, just, you're supposed to declare your customary rights are intact. I declare my customary rights. Now, for any of those... All you triple vexed people, and um, <laughs> soon, soon to get your fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> Who are fortunate enough to travel overseas? I just asked for divine intervention, and she opened the borders for me. But um, when you come back in, and they ask you to sign that, you say, "No, check my bags first. Check my bags and then I will sign. Why? Because if you find something that's not mine in there that I don't know about, by signing this, I've committed fraud. So if you wait, geez, I give you bad advice, don't I? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. She would have been sitting on the beach. <laughs> I've got, I got a real bad group over here. I've got to, bloody, got to be careful. Luckily, they sat out of the way of all you good people over here. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, I saw it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, um, yep. I'll, I'll actually um, I'll bring that up after, after lunch. I'll go down to my car and grab, grab that because... Um, He's, he's talking about in the passport, so I'll show you that. I'll show you that after um, after lunch, okay? Um, because there are ways around everything. And, and once again, I was um, I was doing a gold mining operation up in the Solomon Islands, and um, every time I came back through customs, I had a full search. Put your bag up there, and I was sound asleep. I'm a good sleeper. Man, I sleep. No one else can because I snore like a bloody. <laughs> Sound asleep there and woke up 
grabbed my passport and opened it to the front page and holy shit, my remedy was there. I, but I'll, I'll explain that when I actually show it to you. Um, you know, once you actually connect, a lot is revealed to you. Okay. okay. They wouldn't. No. That's because you don't know your rights. Right. Say, show, show me, show me where it says, but I can't. Okay, if our agents uphold statute, how do we get them to work for us? Okay, so. Yep, so check my bag first. But now they say to you, did you, did you pack your bags? They ask you specifically, are you the one that has packed your bags? Yeah. Have your bags been with you all the time? So, so, so if, if anyone asks me questions, all I say is, what's the presumption? Right. Okay? They're presuming things. Right. They know what they're talking about, but you, you don't. Right. So what's the presumption? Come on, spill the beans. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, look, when, when these people are lazy, particularly lawyers. How many lawyers in the room today? <laughs> no, we had one in the last one, in the last, my, my final. Um, <laughs> my final workshop that I did a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, but they're lazy. They don't want to work for their commission. Oh, it's gone now. They want people who don't know anything who are just dumb. If you're too hard, if you know the right questions, they'll go away. Did they require your sovereign ID or no? Did they require any form of identification? Obviously, you've got your own identification. Um, I don't even bother. No, that's no I don't even bother now. No. But I know the questions. I'm not. Don't try this at home. <laughs> okay. We've gone on to the questions part. You've all got that, the next page, or. Yeah. Questions. Are you. Now, this. Right at the beginning, we said that we were finding our status. Now, what we're going to do here, guys, is establish our status by asking them questions. We're not going to say, I'm this, I'm that. What is that? No, it's making a claim. If you make a claim, who has to prove the claim? God, now it's sugar, is it? <sighs> oh, honey, honey. <laughs> whenever you make a claim, or whenever we make a claim, we have to prove it. So what we're going to do is ask them questions that they cannot respond to or they have to admit to. Are you an agent of the crown? What does that do? <laughs> now I, yeah. <laughs> we don't have to say, I'm the principal, you're the agent. By asking them that question, we have now established our status are you an agent of the Crown establishes our status. You've got to get that clear. We're not saying you're an agent of the Crown. We're asking a question, are you an agent of the Crown? If they're an agent, then the agent principal Relationship kicks in.
And as I told you before, I was an agent for 20 odd years. So I knew the agent principal relationship extremely well. So without making claims or anything, just by asking that question, we've now established that we are the principal. Do you all get that? That is the simplest and quickest way to establish our status. Oh, I've rubbed it off, haven't I? Yeah? No, 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 the agent is not the principal. So if someone came, as a real estate agent, if someone came to me to sell their house, they were the principal and they appointed me agent. Okay? Now, what is happening here is the agent is acting for the trust. They're trying to raise money for the trust. They don't know this, guys. They're not told this. All they know is that if they issue with you with a traffic ticket, or with water rates, or with power bills, or anything like that, they're acting as agents for the, for the trust or the crown. So by asking them a simple question, you have now established the agent principal relationship. They can't. They may not understand. No, they know their agents. Now, if you think for one minute that Jacinda Ardern is running the country, <laughs> mate, that, that pipe that she's on, I, I could tell you other stories, but they're second hand. Um, the people in the ivory towers, once again there was a song, and they while away the hours in the ivory towers, laugh and talk for hours in the back of a black limousine. Okay. The people in the ivory towers are the ones who take their instructions from those men in black. They are the ones that run the country. The politician's job is only to sell the message to the dumb, unsuspecting. Big pardon? I've got a question. So, and it's really going on with what you're saying. So, if that were to happen and we did ask them, are you an agent of the Crown? And that, my presumption is that they understand what that means. So, they don't know. Well, I, 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 I'm, just getting, I'm just getting to that. <laughs> Can we have a bit of foreplay first? Okay, yeah. A little, little, little bit of foreplay and we'll get there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so what happens is it lands on a desk. I can guarantee that if you send that to the commissioner or the police or Jacinda or Dern or anything, it will not go to their desk. It goes to the people in the ivory towers. And they look at it and they say, holy shit, we're in deep doo-doos here, guys. Someone knows the agent-principal relationship. Now, mid I'll go back many years ago. You remember Dan? Dan Davis? Dan Davis came to me and um, he had a letter written, beautifully, beautifully written. And I said, Dan, do you mind if I... I've always been a good letter writer, um, guys. And... Um, no, no, honestly, I'm telling you, if you want to excel at one thing, is learn how to write good letters. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to teach you today. So anyway, I said, do you mind if I rewrite this letter? And he says, yeah, no problem. So I rewrote the letter. Dan rang me five past nine the next day. And he said, Bill, out of all the letters I've written to the Prime Minister, to anyone, he said, I've never got a response. He said, Helen Clark is meeting me in the airport at 12 o'clock today. He said, that's the first time I've had a response to a letter. The 
the thing was, he didn't take me with him, so he fell flat. He didn't know what I'd written. Prince up. Got up, bro. <laughs> and fell flat on his face. So, anyway. Are you sworn to uphold statute? They swear on that book to uphold statute. Sorry, Bill, me again. Um, are we assuming... Hi, me. Um, are we assuming that this is written communication, not verbal? If anyone picks up the phone and starts talking to these agents on the phone... You automatically have a contract. But I'm pleased you brought that up, me. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, it's okay, me. Um, sometimes when you do things, you'll get a phone call. What is that? For those in the back seat, you won't be able to read that tough. <laughs> Should have got here early. That's the recontract. The moment they pick up the phone and call you, they're trying to recontract you. So thank you, me. That was that was a real good question, even though it was wrong in the sense. But um, the recontract. So what should you do the moment someone calls you? Yes. You should. Yes. Gotcha, you bastard. Okay. I feel a recontract coming on. So all you need to do is say, and especially private numbers, I like them. <laughs> private numbers. The moment you hear a commissioned agent on the phone, Thank you. Anything you have to say, please put it in writing in your private capacity under your full and unlimited commercial liability. I can tell you what. Full and unlimited commercial liability. That is going to avoid the recontract. Sorry? That is going to avoid the recontract. Okay? Because they will never sign in their private capacity and under their full commercial liability. Because they're not hiding behind the office. Now, may I? Yes, you may. Now you're going to have to share that with the whole group, so. Sorry, my of that so, if you don't have a paper trail, yeah. If you don't have a paper trail, when you get to court, oh, that's hearsay, judge. That's hearsay. Everything that was done on the phone or face to face is hearsay. And that's why they say you can't take recordings in. Everything must be done in writing under their full commercial liability. If it isn't, if it isn't done that way, and, and I'll, give you, I'll give you a few clues later. Okay, so they swear on the Bible to uphold statute. 
So guess what? With those two questions, we have now established our status and their status. Now, as a private company, without bullying them or anything like that, we have established our status with two questions. We have boxed them into a corner. Now all we need to do, excuse me, is if they're sworn to uphold statute, we'll give them the statute that they must uphold. Is this becoming more and more clear to the, to the group down here? To my groupies over here? <laughs> Did we sign a contract with you? We didn't. So they're coming in as opportunists. So what's the presumption? We don't know our rights. We don't know our wrongs either. Just, uh, just as a little aside, um, just totally unrelated, <laughs> totally unrelated. On Wednesday night, I was out at dinner and um, I came down with COVID. This is real. My throat felt like razor blades. My head was aching. My ear was aching. And I felt like shit. I went home. Climbed into took it about three or four times on Thursday. I'm just going to sit down for a minute. Took it about uh, three or four times on Thursday. Friday, I was back to my same cheeky self. So, uh, do you all know what um, CDS is? Okay. Pay me all. <laughs> I was... <laughs> okay. I told you you're going to have to pay. Oh. Chlorine dioxide solution. And those, those of you, I love it when people immediately go online and start looking because I told you, don't believe a fucking word I say. Brilliant. It's, it's magic. All I, did, all I did was three drops in a glass of water, and you can't use tap water. You've got to use distilled water. For those who actually want to hear good health advice, thank you, three drops in a glass of distilled water, you can't have anything for an hour before and an hour after. To me, it's no problem because I've, I've done fasting and that sort of thing, so I, I don't need, I haven't had breakfast. I've probably, I might have one or two meals today, you know, if I'm lucky. But um, it's actually quite amazing how it's made. It's, it's, Donald Trump gave it away a few years ago. Guys, 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 there's people here who want to hear this, okay? Donald Trump gave it away, it's drain cleaner. But what you do is you put a little shot glass full of um, distilled water into a container with a, a screw top lid and you put the chlorine dioxide in the, the water around it and the fumes go into the shot glass with the distilled water and it infuses the water with the fumes of the chlorine dioxide. And I'll tell you what, I've never... If, if you've heard of uh, Miracle Mineral Solution, it's, it's the same thing but better. You don't have the horrible taste and it's more effective because it's a, um, it's a gas 
and unlike a dog yesterday, <laughs> far out. Talk about, just as well you didn't bring the dog today, mate. That dog would clear the room, I tell you. <laughs> I'm not kidding, am I? No, that was, poor old Ruby, my God. <laughs> Cleared the room. We're serious discussion next week. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so the chlorine dioxide as a gas, once you take it, it's the gas that goes, so it goes straight through everything, kills all the um, parasites, everything. Uh, yeah, you can do hydrogen peroxide with nebulizer. Yeah. Yeah. No, you drink, you drink. You drink it, but the gas goes through. Yeah. And you don't need much. Okay, so the final question, you don't need, you don't need all these, but I'm showing you is to establish your status, this is what you can do. Are you receiving a commission? Mate. Under Section 5 of the Secret Commissions Act, they cannot disclose this to you or they're going to pierce the corporate veil. Now, if you pierce the corporate veil, the whole system is exposed. And that's what Toto did in The Wizard of Oz. So have you all look, looked up what Toto means? Just like Finding Nemo. Do you all know what Nemo Nobody. nobody. Nemo means nobody. So if, um, if someone asks you your name, you can quite legitimately answer Nemo. <laughs> they give you all the clues, but you guys are so busy with sex and drugs and rock and roll. Leave it all to me. <sighs> well, the constables know about Nemo. Yeah, the constables know that. Oh. So here we go. Secret Commissions Act. Look how old this act is. Now, like I said, they don't hold, they don't not give you full disclosure. They give you full disclosure for everything. Okay, so they're telling you it's only an act and only actors act. So the agents are coming in as actors. And they say, this act empowers me. And I said, well, my wheat fix empowers me. What we think we're seeing and, and the reality is quite different. There's, um, there are so many levels of deception that you have no idea. Um, a really good movie to watch is uh, The Boys from Brazil. Um, shows you about the cloning that the, um, that the Nazis were doing. But... That's only one small part of it. And I was just mentioning at lunchtime that um, if any of you have not watched Superman 1, right at the beginning of Superman 1, they bundle the little baby up and send him down to our planet. And they say to him, you are going to a planet that is a thousand years behind us, you will have superpowers. Those people reside in the Antarctic and underground. And okay, so when you know these things, God, it's bloody. Some people are interested in listening to me. <laughs> Some people can't hear with the constant background noise. Okay, so reality. <laughs> sorry, did I frighten you? <laughs> reality and what we think we're seeing are totally different. But as you become more attuned to the 5D, 
vibrations or the 5D energy, you will start to see things differently. And I, I'm sure a lot of you are aware, some of you are still fairly new. I will show you some legislation where common law is mentioned in the Acts, but I never go down the common law path. All I know is that for an agent to interact with me, he needs a contract. When an agent interacts with me, he's getting a secret commission. Now, before, before lunch, someone mentioned about the front of a passport. So I brought a passport in here, and I'll read out what it says at the beginning of this. Now, I told you on the plane, I woke up, grabbed my passport, and looked at it. Okay. Her Britannic Majesty's Secretary of State requests and requires in the name of Her Majesty all those whom it may concern to allow, allow the bearer to pass freely without let or hindrance and to afford the bearer such assistance and protection as may be necessary. Now, I put my case up and I, I said to the... Um, Never, never deal with counter trolls. Uh, okay? Go higher up the food chain. And they hate that. I always say, is there someone higher up the food chain? <laughs> and I tell you what, they don't like that at all. But, so they'll send someone who's a bit higher up the pay grade, probably more politically correct, but I'm not. So... <clears throat> Anyway, the, um, the guy comes out and uh, I said, could you read that out aloud? And he just looks at her and he says, ah, that'll be all, thank you. And he zips my bag back up and, yeah. and he coughed from afar. I had, I heard a far cough. Did that slip out? <laughs> Sorry. I'm naughty. Don't, don't encourage me. Jeez. Okay. Persons deemed to be agents. Now, what I'm trying to show you guys is the difference between a beneficiary is when you go begging on your hands and knees to wins, who is a private company, a piece of paper, who has agents working for it, it's a piece of paper, has agents working for it, and you go in there on your hands and knees and you get treated as such. When they, when you go to see them, they are actually acting as an agent. So if you reverse the role, because you have learned your status, all of a sudden they become, now if anyone wants to um, uh, get a, a photo of that or anything, you're welcome to come up. I won't ridicule you. I won't take the, no, look at them all, scaredy cats. <laughs> For the purposes of this act, every officer of a corporation and every member of a governing body of a corporation shall be deemed to be an agent of the corporation. And so if we go down to see every person in the service of the crown, who's the crown? Sorry? The birth certificate? The placenta? Just straw man, yeah. Okay, so they're telling you in that act the Secret Commissions Act, what an agent of the Crown is. But unless you know what your status is, then you have no status. You'll be deemed a Benny. Does he still participate in all their rights and privileges? Oh, yeah. As long as you don't contract, you can still have a licence and a passport and 
Absolutely. Okay. But if you, if, you, if you know your rights... Now, a lot of people, when, um, when a cop pulls them up on the side of the road, they have a brain freeze. They've been taught this fear, that four-letter word, beginning with F. Fear. Okay? Everyone's in fear. Now, I know some people who are absolutely in fear over something beginning with <laughs> I-R-D. I. <laughs> absolutely terrified of them. I don't fear these people anymore because um, I've done everything and they know that they can't hurt me. They know that they can't do anything that would worry me. They sent in land revenue after me, only because I stopped paying tax. <laughs> I mean, just a simple thing like that, really. So they actually um, they came after me and um, said that I owed them 520000 Yours is peanuts. <laughs> Peanuts. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little personal thing over here. Okay. 520,000, so me being the smart ass that I am, I went down and put the company into liquidation. I went down to McDonald Vague in Grays Ave in Auckland. Anyone wants to put a company in liquidation? McDonald Vague cost me four grand back then, but um, anyway, from what transpired there, I learned how to pay my tax. It's very simple when you know. Very simple. So much so, then I think it was 2015, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, it was probably around 2015, 2016. I thought, shit, I haven't filed a tax return. Mind you, I haven't paid tax, but uh, I haven't filed a tax return. So I actually thought maybe I should do the upstanding citizen type thing and file a tax return. So I did. I got the form and I signed it and dated it and sent it in. I get a phone call. You haven't, you haven't put how much you earned there. And I said, well, that's because I don't know. <laughs> I said, I don't know how much the CDK Trust is earning, but I guess you would. <laughs> I won't go any further in that story because I know you guys will get yourselves into a lot of trouble if you do the shit that I do. <laughs> <laughs> don't try this at home. Okay, so... If you go to the fo oh sorry, if you go to the fo oh bugger, the final bit there. Nothing in this section shall be so construed as to restrict, restrict in any manner the meaning of the terms agent or principal as used in this act. Now, how many of you have bothered since or over the break to look up principal? I guess I'm going to have to do it for you. <laughs> Phew. Sorry? Highest in rank. Thank you. Who was that? Thank you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> okay, someone who actually took the trouble to look it up. As I said right at the beginning, don't believe a word I say. Principal is the highest in rank. So where does that put the agent? The bottom of the heap. <laughs> okay, so now if you know your rights, you're going to be better off. They know this. They know, well, the people who intercept the letters know this. Now, like people write to the Queen and they, they get a response back from her secretary. 
because the Queen would never see any of those letters that you send. They're all intercepted by the civil servants. And if any of you watched Yes Minister, now there's, there's clips on YouTube. Go and have a look at some of those clips on YouTube, Yes Minister, and that is exactly how the system is run. The politicians are only the front face to sell it to us. And what they do is they fly a kite, they call it. They fly a kite. They say, see if this will go up. So they broach something. So they'll put something out into the media, who are their puppets, and um, Horse Features has given them a lot of money to, to keep up the narrative. But they'll put something out. If the wind catches it and takes it up, that means the public has accepted it. Right, we'll go ahead with that. Now, I can tell you back in 2007, uh, a group approached me, and they had over 6,000 people in their group. It was the uh, Natural Health Charter, and asked me to write a letter. They know that I'm good, or write a, was that stifled? Yes. <laughs> stifled. I wrote a public notice for them. They put it into, the, um, into a newspaper three times, and that stopped the natural... Um, TGA. Sorry? It was the TGA. TGA, Therapeutic Goods and Services Act. Stopped it in its tracks. Okay? You can do this. You see, everything that goes through Parliament is just a... Bill? Jeez, it's a waste of humour, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolute waste of humour. Oh, dear. Okay, so every, everything that goes through is just a bill. Someone always has to pay the bill, or at the end of the night, someone always has to pick up the bill. Okay, so if it goes through as a bill, they do three readings. After the third reading, what happens? No, it doesn't. They wait 90 days. What for? It's a 90-day bill. They wait for someone to pay the bill. If you pay the bill, it's gone. If you don't, then the public has to pay the bill. As I say, I always get paid. <laughs> someone has to pay the bill. If you wrote on the back of your birth certificate a bond and says, here, this is to pay the bill, it's gone. Don't get any ideas. Don't try this at home. Okay. No, you can put whatever amount you want, but if you pay the bill, it's gone. After 90 days, if no one pays the bill, the Governor-General says, right, public, away you go. You're going to pay for that for the rest of your lives. How do I work out all this shit? <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> Now, speak, speaking of which, speaking of which, when you turn 100, you get a letter from someone or from her uncivil servants. What do you think? They don't spell it out, but anything can only last for 99 years. So any, any contract we have with those corporations or any treaties or anything like that expire after 99 years. You can't have a treaty go indefinitely. You can't have a Sedicate Trust go indefinitely. It has to expire. 
It's normally the lifetime of a person. So what old lizard breath is saying... <laughs> oh, so, sorry, slip of the tongue there. Eliz Elizabeth. Just, sorry. I've got a speech impediment. No. Sorry. <laughs> Don't encourage me. <laughs> what she is saying is, hey, the 99 years is up. Would you like your trust to be returned to you or would you like to carry on? So by silent acquiescence, now you're all aware of that, aren't you? And look at your race to your phones to find out what silent acquiescence means. You're agreeing to stay in the system for another year. And supposedly, I don't know, I'm not 99 yet, just a couple of years to go. One and a half, something like that. Um, if you at that stage say, thank you for your offer, I would like all that money in my CDK by trust back. Deal done. So if you've got any relatives who are about to, car oh, sorry, um, um, <laughs> turn 100, tell them when they get the letter from old Lizard. Uh, Liz oh, yeah, she's got trouble with that. They can renegotiate the contract. It's the same when you're in court. Oh, we come to, yeah, we, yeah. Just, just remind myself of, of me. Because um, we do come to it, I know that. Now here, this, people are wondering why Taupo Council suddenly reversed everything. Just so happens I have a very active group down there, actually groupies, <laughs> and this was a letter that was sent to someone whose name shall remain a nonny mouse. Okay, summary of rights. What a great council. They actually tell you what your rights are. This is the front. This is the front. And that's the back of there. And it tells you what your summary of rights is. Now, guess what? Oh, I think I'll bring it up a bit clearer on the, the next one, I think. Here we go. This paragraph describes a defence additional to those described in paragraph three and four. This defence is available if you are a principal. How does this shit fall into my hands? <laughs> Honestly. But now, that council, because of some of the things we've been doing down that way, have realised they're in serious shit, and that's why they've taken all restrictions off. Others will follow, and you need to be doing the same sort of stuff. Okay, Don't leave it all to me. Okay, so there's, there's a really good council. They explain your rights. And if you look on the back of your tickets, they'll also explain your rights, but you're too lazy. Leave it all to me. <laughs> An agency relationship is a fiduciary. Another word that you must look up. Don't leave it all to me. Fiduciary relationship where one person called the principal allows an agent to act on his or her behalf. The agent is subject to the principal's control. Oh, I, you didn't tell me the truth. I know what you asked me. Where did I get all my information from? Okay, so... So I'm just going to show you just a couple of the books. And, and now I spend a fortune on these things. Can you, can you tell the group how much I paid for that? Yeah, yeah. Five dollars. Oh, shit. <laughs> Five million. <laughs> Five dollars. Uh, that one there was three dollars. <laughs> I go around the uh, op shops. Oh, that one was 50 cents. So I paid... A lawyer among the theologians. Where's that lady whose father? Yeah. A lawyer among the theologians. 
Um, you're asking where I get where I get my information from, okay? Not from common law. <laughs> Look at that one. The king's two bodies. What? What? <laughs> the king's two bodies. How do I find all this stuff? Don't ask me. Um, how much did I pay for that one? Another big price? Four dollars. $4. But even better, these ones here that um, I somehow managed to acquire, very few lawyers would see this sort of stuff. The law of nations. No, 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 I, I, I got this downloaded um, free. So. This one here, um, the nature of equity. Now, this is the laws of New Zealand. All these here are the laws of New Zealand. They're very different to statute, as I told you earlier. The laws are something that cannot be changed. So what happens... I'll sit down so you don't have to bloody look around me. <laughs> what happens? Statute is the rules of a private company. It's an in-house policy that anyone working for that private company, it used to be the Queen and Right of New Zealand, it's changed. The last filing for the Queen and Right of New Zealand was 2011. And you used to be able to go on to the Securities Exchange Commission and see their annual returns. The government had to file its annual returns because it's a private company. Okay, but that's all changed now. So anything that they put through Parliament, don't be embarrassed, come up here. Are you trying to get a picture of me or a selfie? Or, oh. <laughs> So it's a private company. Anything called statute is for a private company. Now, people think that they can go into those private courts and get remedy. You can't. It's like going into McDonald's and saying, I don't like your hamburgers, I want a bucket of, bucket of uh, wings. What's the KFC bucket thingy? Yeah. You can't go in to a private company and tell them what to do. All you can do is go and order a hamburger. But a private company has its own rules and you must abide by those rules if you want the benefits. So if you want the benefits of killing yourself, go in and eat McDonald's, which is all aborted babies and... Um, Sorry. Sorry, I don't hold back. <laughs> so what happens when a statute comes in? The top lawyers, unlike someone's dad, sit down and have a look through the statute and say, this does not comply with the human rights. So they write the laws of New Zealand, and our remedies are in here. Now, most people listen to a whole pile of American bullshit, and I heard someone at lunchtime saying, um, notice to agent is notice to principal, notice to principal is notice to agent. What a load of shit. <laughs> You're the principal. You notify the agent. You don't bloody notify yourself. <laughs> Principle is the highest in rank. Okay, so in these books, although I go through the statute, the only reason I go through the statute is to keep them in check. Now, the laws of New Zealand are totally different. Where do you find those? On your stick. <laughs> Oh no, I just downloaded them to someone there. I, I was, no, 
I've done all the hard work for you. I'll, I'll show you the remedy. But we were luckily enough to get, uh, back in 2009, we were lucky enough to get somehow <laughs> LexisNexis for three months. And we downloaded all the laws of New Zealand and found all our remedies in the laws of New Zealand. The lawyers don't know this shit. All they do is they get taught process and they will, they will follow the process. They know what form to get and where to go and get it, and where to lodge it and all that sort of stuff. They don't know the law. Probably 2% of them know the law. Okay, so I told you I'd go through statutes, so I'm just going to take a little... I'll go to it anyway. Okay, so do you all know how to go um, into the New Zealand um, legislation? I think, I think it actually does come up, but if it comes up again, I'll just, just fast forward. Okay, so Crimes Act 1961. Now, here I'll mention common law. <laughs> I will mention it a couple of times, okay, but... I remember seeing it in some, one of your videos. Yeah, but I don't use common law. Okay, so, no one shall be convicted of any offence at common law of any other offence against any act of the Parliament of England or of the Parliament of Great Britain or the Parliament of the United Kingdom, provided that... Nothing in this section shall limit or affect the power or authority of the House of Representatives to punish for contempt. So there is only one crime in that whole Crimes Act that's punishable. Contempt of court. Tells you right there in section 9. Contempt of court. How do they get you into contempt of court? Swear on the Bible. Matthew 5 says, swear no oaths. The moment you swear against their book, you're gone. That's the only offence punishable. But there's some little doozies in there to hold them accountable, which we will come to later. So anyway, that's just a, that's just a little trip aside. So we'll go back here. Oh. Okay. Why would you go to court? Why would you go to court? I'm, I'm trying to show you how to pick your battles. Not your nose. Okay. Pick your battles. Don't argue and fight. If you go into their system, you're going to lose. I can win. I've had the judges walk off twice uh, was the most I've had. had them walk off. I've had judges get to the door. They go out through the door. Then they turn around and look at me and bow. <laughs> no kidding. I've had three judges bow to me um, only because they know that I know. And they, they recognise it. I can, I can vouch for that bill. Honest, I, um, I used, I, I've been through a court case with three judges and um, it took me two years. And um, one of my cousins introduced me to one of your movies, one of your films. So I went in there and threw shit at the wall. I went through three judges, but I learned because like in there you said not to attack the judge, but to attack the prosecutor. So I learned as I went along. And by the time I got to the, they did railroad me, they threatened me, everything you said was going to happen, it all took place, and I just held my ground, and then I went right you to the third judge, he actually retired after that, and threw the case out, <laughs> but two days before, I listened to your video, and you said to put in a claim, so two days before they threw it out, I put a claim in for 150 mil, that judge Lanny threw, the, threw it out and then retired, so I went back to try and claim it, they you can't because he's gone. Yep. So they were ahead of me all the time. Yep. But oh, yeah. It works. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Yep. Look, I had... 
первый. I had um, one of our one of our mutual friends who um, was in court, and I said, "You stay outside the court. I'll go and and do it for you." And um, anyway, three times I shut the judge down. So she walked off, and um, she had an Indian um, uh, registrar, and the registrars are the court. The registrars take the bet. And it's a presumption. <coughs> they presume that you do not know your rights. You do not know that they're prosecuting a trust. And so they're taking a bet that you don't know. So anyway, the Indian lawyer, uh, sorry, the Indian uh, prosecutor, he's looking out the door. No, he's still there. No, he's still there. And I stayed there. So the judge came back out and assumed this thing. Now, one of the things you'll find is that uh, I've told you about the rule of three. The reason I know the rule of three, I was born on the third of the third, so I had a double reminder. <laughs> so the rule of three, on the second one, they'll explain, once you refuse their first offer of contract, the second one, they will explain it very carefully. Do you understand? No. <laughs> what happens next is the old foot goes on the button. And all of a sudden the place swarms with coppers and security. They get, they get the buzzer and they swarm. Now I had two 10 foot tall gorillas come, come to me and I said, do not take another step. And they stopped in their tracks. And the judge said, arrest him, arrest him. And I said, do not take another step. And they stopped. She walked off. <laughs> okay, but it, I got banned from the courts after that. <laughs> I, got told, I got told by a friendly lawyer, Bill, if you go into the courts, you're going to be arrested on site. So that really stopped me. <laughs> that really stopped me. <laughs> anyway, why do you keep taking me off on tangents? You know, don't encourage me. <laughs> um, okay, so, so we were talking about the Crimes Act. Now, they are accountable under the Crimes Act, not us. Unless we swear on their Bible. It means we've cursed their book. Oh, which, which reminds me, I gave you a couple of things before, did I not, about um, A4 legal paper and full scap paper. There's also another one. Uh, have you heard of italics? Okay, so italics is cursive. Cursive language. When you write, it's cursive. So you're cursing them. Okay, so you just write in upright, or you print actually. Cursive. You're cursing them. Mate, they're, they're tricky. They sneak in with the humans. Okay, so under their system, once you know all the rules, which we'll gradually get to, if, if I don't... Sorry? Yep. I hadn't thought of that, but um, you, you may be right, I don't know. But w what I will tell you is... I like that. <laughs> um, all the maxims, all the maxims are written in italics. Now, what I told you before, the maxims are immutable law. They must be upheld. So guess what else is in italics? All the court cases. So all the case precedents 
the things that the judge must obey is maxims, Um, case precedent and ecclesiastical okay they must obey they are bound to uphold those because those are immutable laws and you can you can see who all the naughty people are writing flat out. <laughs> I've, I know I've got you. I've got you memorised. <laughs> okay. The agent is subject to the principal's control. Never forget it. That is your status. Agency relationships can also arise from circumstances even without explicit agreement. Whether an implied agency arose is a question of fact for a jury or judge to, to, to determine if the issue comes up in a trial. Okay, so who would have an example of an agency relationship without explicit agreement? I did mention it before, but um, I, can, I can see sometimes you've got to punch that information in more than once. Silent acquiescence is a relationship without explicit agreement. But by our silence, we have acquiesced or we have agreed to it. Now this becomes, and, and you really need to learn this because... This will become more than apparent when we get to letter writing. By that stage, we'll be just about right for, for dinner to arrive. Um, you all put your orders. <laughs> good, good luck with that. I hope you've, hope, you've hope you've tipped the waitress. Okay, characteristics of agency. Now, at the top there, you will see djetlawyer.com it creates a bipartite and tripartite relationship okay so this now this may go above your head but the bipartite is between us and the agent what is the tripartite It's the trust. Okay, so the tripartite is the trust. It's a shame you had to sit there, but, um, you know, if, if you paid more, you could have been in the front row, you know, ringside, <laughs> ringside. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> oh, I, I can see I'm in real trouble, and... I know I'm going to get bit slapped all the way out. So <laughs> okay, so a bipartite is between us and the agent, but the tripartite, once we go into contract with them, then the trust becomes involved. And the reason the trust becomes involved is for what reason? Because the agent is raising money for the trust. The Agent will take the money from us and give some to the trust and take a commission. Will he disclose that commission? No. And that's why they can never, ever give full disclosure because the most important thing about it is they would disclose the trust and once again that would pierce the corporate veil. <laughs> okay. It is determined by law. The relationship between the parties 
is one that is determined by law and not by consent or intention of the parties involved. In some instances, the parties might think there is an agency relationship between them, while in the eyes of the law, there is no such relationship. Okay, so they're coming in under false pretenses, which we will come to in the letter writing part of this. Sorry. Freeze frame. No, here we go. It creates a fiduciary relationship. Agency creates a fiduciary relationship between the principal and the agent. Fiduciary relationship, I guess all you smart ones out there have already looked it up. It's the highest level of trust in law. It concerns legal rights and obligations, and here we go. The actions of the agents affects the principal's legal rights and obligations. Okay, so that's the characteristics of an agency. And as I say, I was in real estate for 20 years, so I know the law of agency, and I know the, the agent principal relationship. And once again, I can tell you, not many real estate agents know this shit. Um, I had st stuff given to me by whomever. You've got a surly looking face there. Kim, what's going on? Hi. We're going to be learning how to write letters, so we've got to find out who we write the letters to. It's to the agent in their private capacity. Now, they do not like doing this. Now, John Key was very, very good. He gave away so many clues when he was Prime Minister. He got asked. I think it was, um, did he have shares in this particular company. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't. It was something else, yeah. They said, was your, uh, were you briefed on this? And he said, no, I wasn't. So they said, was your office briefed on this? Yes. Were you in the office at the time? No. So he'd taken his office hat off and put it on the desk and put his private hat on. Okay, that's how devious it is. He can be sitting there and being told something, but sorry, I've got my private hat on now, so I can't hear a word you're saying. I know what you're saying, but I can't hear what you're saying. So, swapping hats is part of the game. So, when we address an agent in their private capacity, we're stepping them out of their office, so we're taking that office hat off and putting the private hat on. Now they're accountable as a man-to-man. -man. And what does the good book say about when you have a dispute? Go first to thine brother. Less, oh, sorry, go first... <laughs> First to thine adversary, lest you be taken before a judge. Oh, here, here, here comes a good one. Here comes a good one. Come. How do you deal with the thing if you have an ex who is always adamant on taking things to court rather than settling in private? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You see... What will happen? What will happen is that you will get a lawyer, a, a letter from her lawyer, won't you? Uh, we both self-represented, so really, she's put an application. Be yourself. Be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to be re-presented? You're representing yourself as the trust. So now you're representing 
the living as the dead. Sorry, just have a look at your shoes. You shot yourself in the foot, buddy. I knew it would be a good one. <laughs> you never want to be represented. If judge says, are you representing yourself? No, I will be myself. And that was, that was what happened the first time I went into court and gave them a bond. The judge looked at the bond. Hmm. He's already been paid. The, the courts are just a bank. He's been paid, his job's over. Now he just has to check that I wasn't watching Bill Turner online. Do you want to say about the lawyer? So with that dispute between exes, you received a letter from their lawyer. Hold on, someone's bloody yakking over here. Yeah, you'll receive a letter from... What would you do with them now, that part? Okay, you write back to them, because what they will say is, uh, I suggest you engage a lawyer. So, we write back to them and say, we suggest you cough from afar. <laughs> In other words, far cough. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez, I hope, I hope, I hope the editors are bloody good. <laughs> I just say we have an intercontract because Abigail's over with Bunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
A V E R M E N T. So negative averment means agreement, but a negative averment means you're coming in, you put a not in there, N O T, not a K N O T. Yeah. It's just something that you can look up, do your own research. Don't trust a word that I say, young lady. All right? I'll put you down the garden path, no trouble. Okay, now if we're not writing to an agent, if we're writing to someone like Baycorp or someone like that, who would who would we write to? Dear unnamed writer. What? <laughs> <laughs> Dear unnamed writer, the collections thing never never put it. Oh, mate, I'm I'm, I'm going to have to slap you round. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to slap you round. What did I tell you in the, in the previous slide? Who do you write to? Okay, so so you need to have a living being. Okay, you need to have a living being. So if you're going to write to Baycorp or someone like that, who would you write to? CEO. CFO, even, no, Chief Financial Officer, CFO, even better, go online and look up who the directors of the company are. Okay, so the directors, if you hold them personally liable, oh dear. Sorry? That's what happened. <laughs> I was trying to look up a company on Thursday and it, it was offline. So someone must have been doing a whole bunch of searches somewhere. <laughs> Could have been. Okay, so we're going to go for the highest ranking in that organisation, the CEO or CFO. Now, you've got, your, you've got your things there. Or the director. Now you're talking to a living or communicating with a living, not unnamed, bloody self represent Yeah, but you've got to get their name. You can't just address a registrar. And in fact, I'll, I'll ask a registrar at, um, at the next break. Because <laughs> there's one in the room, but I'm, I'm, not, going to, I'm not going to disclose where. Okay, so letter was an unnamed yeah, so you need to get on the phone and say, "Hey, who is this?" Okay, if you don't check, okay, I'm going to share a little secret with you. Do you mind if I share a secret? Okay, donations gratefully accepted. <laughs> okay. Inland Revenue, every computer has a name. WINS, every computer has a name. So if you happen to walk over to this desk and see Joe Bloggs and you type a letter to, look, looky over glasses lady here, <laughs> Send, Joe Blog sends a letter to you. If you go into contract with them by any of those, then a living person takes over, but they still use the computer name. Okay? So the first thing you must do is find out 
whether you're talking to a computer or a living being. Now, you will find out very quickly, you'll find out very quickly because you'll ring up and ask for Joe Bloggs, oh, he's not in at the moment. <laughs> uh, when will he be back? Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, that is how, same thing will happen with the ACC. All their computers will be named. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They, I tell you what, everything I do and everything I show people what to do, they have a way of correcting it within a very, very short time. And a friend of mine who's a lawyer in the courts up in Albany, he said, Bill, oh, this is going back years when I was young, dumb, and full of um, bright ideas. Uh, <laughs> You can see all the dirty minds working, working overtime, can't you? <laughs> you see, every time, don't encourage me. <laughs> Bloody terrors, I tell you. Okay, he would say, Bill, every time you go into court, he said, within two, a transcript goes through to Wellington. He said, within two days, they have worked out how to count a bill. He said, so every Friday, they will, the judges will knock off at 12 o'clock on a Friday, go upstairs for drinks. And this is how to combat Bill. And so they've worked out a strategy to overcome me. Now, I found out firsthand. Um, I went in and I'd, I'd, I'd used this tactic before. And the judge looks at it and he looks at me. <laughs> Not going to work this time. I'm just looking at same paperwork I've put in. <laughs> anyway, I went home and I looked up why. They changed the whole Judicature Act on me. All the forms were changed, all the forms I'd used. Oh, now, just while you're there, go to the uh, second to last page in your book. They changed the whole Judicature Act. The 1908 Judicature Act was changed and it became the High Court rules. I, I tried to use that when I went to go to yep. my um, claim. I couldn't yep. get into the High Court. Yep. They wouldn't even... They wouldn't even uh, no. Well, yep. They changed, they changed the whole thing. Okay, so if you go to the second last page there... Yep. Forms contained within a schedule have statutory force. Second to last page. Go to the last page, all you bright people. That's it. I can see that one. Okay, go to the last page and then just go back one. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, I'll go gentle on you folks. No, I won't. Promise I won't take the piss any more. <laughs> or any less. <laughs> okay. Forms contained in a schedule have statutory force. This is straight out of their books. Okay, so if you find a form, they must uphold that form. Because in the beginning, the world was without form. But then your father filled out a form and put you into the system. So if a form got you into the system, a form will get you out of the system. And I filled out that form in 1982. Inadvertently, these things happened to me. <laughs> How did I get out of the system? Totally exited the system in 1982. I used a form. Forms contained in a schedule have statutory force. I'm surprised I he haven't heard what form. Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving New Zealand permanently. Oh. 
Where did I find that form? In the Inland Revenue Act. No, they took it out when I filled it out again. And um, <laughs> I tell you that I'm always one jump ahead, but then they jump on me in the next one because they they removed the form in 2013, I think, when I used it again. They took it out. They, Shit, this guy's on to us, you know, so, yeah. They do, it will be there somewhere, but you're just going to have to look a lot harder. I can't. No, I didn't. I didn't finish the didn't finish the story, but okay. What happened was in 1982 I went to live in Australia, so I left New Zealand permanently. Okay, when I came back I didn't exist. Couldn't couldn't get a bank loan, couldn't get a credit card, couldn't get anything. But what happened? And luckily I I was blessed with a good memory. A very good memory. And um, the moment I got a job and filled out another form, bang. So in the beginning, the world was without form. Now I know how to do it properly. <laughs> and I'll show you. Uh, don't be so sure of yourself. I may show you. I may, if you're lucky, show you a form. <laughs> I may show you a form. I'm teaching you about Agent Principal. Okay. So you, I may show you a form that you can appoint an agent to act on your behalf. I'll tell you another story. I, I like stories. <laughs> Back in um, 2010, if he talks again, just throw something at him, okay? Back in 2010, a lady was getting mortgagee sailed. And I got a call from a mutual friend of ours, a uh, mutual friend of ours. He said, Bill, can you come and help this lady in court? And I said, yeah. Now, it just so happened a couple of days earlier, I had found a form. Inland Revenue's, Inland Revenue's got a lot of good forms. <laughs> <laughs> and Okay, this form was an IR597 form. Elect someone to act on your behalf. Now, being the cheeky bastard I am, <laughs> I went into the court and I walked straight up the front, you know, I mean, straight up the front and I said to the lawyer, are you the lawyer for the bank? And he says, yeah. And I said, hi, I'm Bill. Have you got a card? So, got his card. <laughs> went outside, jumped on the phone. Could I have your GST number? Yeah wrote it down, put it on the form and appointed the lawyer for the bank as the agent to act on her behalf. <laughs> Sorry? Do I have to accept that or can that lawyer... Oh, yeah, no, no, I, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> the judge, I handed it up to the judge. <laughs> oh, no, actually, I, I handed it to the registrars. Registrars are the most important in the court. They're the ones who take the bets. So handed it up to the registrar who handed it up to the judge. And that'll be all for today, thank you. <laughs> and the poor old bank was... I didn't give him a copy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him that he was now going to pay the debt. So, I mean... No, you've got to have balls to do this shit. <laughs> okay. 
the, the lawyer had no idea what had happened. He really didn't have a clue what had happened. So anyway, that's another story of what actually happens in real life. <laughs> oh, shit. All letters are bills of exchange. Just can't get away from bill, can you? Hey? So when you, when you realize what a bill is, or what a letter is, the fear should go out of you. It's an offer to contract or an offer to settle the bill. So now we just have to teach you how to um, settle the bill. If you ask a question of the agent that is the right question, now I was talking to someone at lunch time, oh yeah, yep, yeah, who, um, who happens to know the angry dwarf. <laughs> he's, he's from down angry dwarf country. <laughs> okay, now, someone who loves to argue, okay? The angry dwarf. <laughs> but if you ask them the right question, there will be no argument and they must go silent because otherwise they would expose the whole system. Can you guys still hear okay over there? I thought I heard snoring, that was all, but um, no. Okay. Don't go being a smart ass like I am. Okay. Just ask. All you need is two questions and immediately you have established your status. They cannot answer the questions that are going to follow. Now, I'm, I'm hoping that I've got it up here. Okay, here we go. Acquiescence. Conduct, recognizing the existence of a transaction and intended to permit the transaction to be carried into effect. A tacit agreement, consent inferred from silence. Now, I cannot give you a more powerful sentence than that one. Oh, you tell. Oh, sorry. I thought. Oh, yeah. Try to. Do you want me to do my hair? No? <laughs> now, people, people like to, once they find information that is really powerful, they want to go and abuse it. You don't need to, guys. You don't need to. All you need to do is for them to go silent. And I'm going to show you some words that absolutely nail them to the wall. Okay, but that one, the last four words there... Consent inferred from silence. Indel that upon your brain. Come. Sorry? Uh, we give them a specified period to respond. I beg your pardon? Um, I don't do anything verbally. Okay. You hop on the phone to someone and you ring them the next day. No, I never heard of you. Deny all knowledge of any phone call. Everything must be in writing. You must have a paper trial that will stand up in court. 
Oh, mate, look, if you're not confident on the side of the road, take the ticket and then go and write, write a letter. It's gone. It's gone. It, it's that simple. Look, um, one of the young ladies down in um, uh, Wanganui, I'm proud of her, $33,000 worth of fines. <laughs> gone. Student loans, gone. Anyone got student loans? Yeah. Real easy. Real easy. Just takes a letter. Anything. It only takes a letter. The only time you're going to use a phone is to find out if it is a computer or a living being. Okay, now these people do not like to be held accountable. They do not like to be in their private capacity because in the office they are bonded. Okay, District Court Rules 2014. Judgment on admission. Now these things are quite important, but I've, ta I've done the hard work for you. So when it comes to the letters, you will find that I have used all this stuff to put it. Okay, now there is a key word there. And if any one of you would care to look up the word, it's admission. Jeez, look at that. <laughs> Talk about grabby. <laughs> okay, admission from... Registrars, bailiffs, and other officers of the court appoint. Why is that? Other than bailiffs may be appointed under public service act. That's not admission. Anika. Oh, okay, okay. Registrars are appointed under public service act. Thank you. Admission. Okay, admission is a very, very powerful word. And so you'll find that I use certain words like far. <laughs> admission. So we've got admission, well, a confession or acknowledgement. Sorry? Admission, a confession or acknowledgement. Voluntary. Admission of facts. Admission of facts. A voluntary acknowledgement. Yep. Good one. I'll, I'll, I'll read out so the people over here can hear it. Just, but uh, thank you, Tracy. Uh, admission. A confession or acknowledgement, admission of facts, is a voluntary acknowledgement. Voluntary. This will become apparent in the letter. Voluntary acknowledgement made by a party to a proceeding which is adverse to the party's interest in the outcome of the proceeding. Okay, so by using that word there, judgment on admission. When we write the letter, if they don't respond, because we use admission there, we automatically have judgment. Automatic judgment. It tells you in the district court rules, which is why we use it. Do you want to see the? No, I won't. You'll see it soon. Soon enough. Okay, that is uh, section 15.12 of the District Court Rules 2014. That, that section, they, they are bound by statute And if we use that word in the letter, they're nailed to the wall. They, there's nothing they can do about it. 
Now, especially for young ladies who might be on bail, real naughty ladies, who are trying to hide behind the <laughs> trying to hide behind the rails. Okay. I had a, had a young lady down in um, Fakatani who gave me a call and said, um, this is on a Thursday. I said, Bill, I'm going to court tomorrow. She was going to jail. She was going to jail. Oh, you, you know. <laughs> you know. She was going to jail. And um, I said, Jesus, talk about leave it till the last minute. So anyway, I quickly wrote up a letter for her, got her a registered mail envelope, everything, sent it off there and then. I wasn't going to leave anything to her. I said, but, yeah, well, you know, oh, I'll post it tomorrow, you know. I'm on my way to, I'm, I'm my way to court, I'll post it now. Anyway, she went to the court. I said, you don't need to go to the court. So she sat outside the court. The cops came out and said, um, oh, you've got to come into court now. So she went in like a fool. She went in. And judge said, oh, okay, uh, yeah, I see what you've, presented to the court, come back at 2 o'clock. So she went back at 2 o'clock. This is a Friday afternoon. Judges are normally upstairs, upstairs uh, having a drinky poos. Anyway, she went back at 2 o'clock. Court was empty. They never have anything booked in the afternoons on a, on a Friday afternoon. So uh, she goes back and he says, yeah, that's it. See you later. That was it. She walked out free. She's a converted believer, unlike angry dwarfs <laughs> who will argue till the cows come home. <laughs> Tell them there is an easier way. Okay, so he, here we go. This is part of the letter. So we've established our status in the letter. And I... I I should have, should have put another name in there, but to hell with it. That name can stay. To clarify the situation, would J.A. Lowndes kindly respond to the following questions to above within, where's the guy who was up there, 14 days? The guy who was up there, 14 days? Okay. Oh, I hope I didn't wake you up. <laughs> oh, Okay. 14 days. Now we've given them a time. Respond to the following questions to above within 14 days with the stipulation that J.A. Lowndes non-response will be accepted as silent acquiescent admission. Okay, what did we tell you admission was? Voluntary admission of the facts or acceptance of the facts contained within. Okay, but we have another word there. Now, I learned this in 2005 from Victoria Joy. She gave us two words, um, uh, presumption. And she used this the whole way through the two-day seminar and stipulation. So how many people... Have looked it up. Stip you, yeah. How many people have looked up stipulation? Actually, that would be a good question to ask Siri. What does, what does cough from afar mean? <laughs> or am I just being Siri? <laughs> Sorry, that was a Chinese accent. <laughs> it's an agreement that the facts contained are true. Now, what lawyers do, 
they will agree to certain things and that becomes a stipulation. Now the judges will accept stipulation because it's an agreement between the parties. Now if we go back to the District Court Act, we've already got agreement and now we Now we have the stipulation that if he doesn't respond, we have a silent acquiescent admission. They're nailed. There's nothing they can do. They cannot respond to these letters. They're agents of the Crown. They're sworn to uphold statute. Now we've got agreement from them. If they don't respond within 14 days, which they can't, Everything, <laughs> oh, now it suddenly becomes clear, Tracy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> now their asses to the wall. <laughs> Cup I? <laughs> this is how powerful the word is. The the pen is mightier than the sword is. Have you have you got a phone with um, with um, a data? Yeah. Okay, look up delivery. Legal definition of delivery. All right. No, look it up now. <coughs> Did you put legal definition of delivery? You don't remember it from the the very first slide that came up, the delivery room. But carry on. Sorry, we had lunch, so I do. Um, yeah, I do realise that. What does it say? Deliveries the surrender of possession to another, the handing over of an object or document or money. Yes. Mm -hmm. It goes further too. Just the money is actual, symbolic, or constructive, and it means that the item is physically transferred from one party to another. Yep. Okay. But delivery is the moment you put it across the counter, it's considered delivery. You have transferred possession from one party. To another. Now they will try and lose them, but luckily I have a friendly registrar or ex registrar who gave me some sound advice. And I'm not looking at them. I can't see them, but anyway. My friendly registrar told me that if you went down to the bank and deposited five dollars into your bank account and used the um, courier bag number. So you get a courier, buy a courier bag, take the number off it, and go and deposit $5 into your own bank account. Or no, better still, put it into mine. <laughs> <laughs> and you used that number, they won't lose the documents because now the banks have perfect records. The banks can hold the courts accountable. I thank that kind registrar. From the heart of my bottom. Oh, sorry, from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Do you tell them that that's what you've done? Beg your pardon? Do you tell them that's what you've done? What? No, you don't have to. You don't have to. But uh, what I found out, because um, someone who did this the other day went and deposited $5, one bank, on the, the, the day before they deposited the $5, they stopped putting the number on the receipt that they give you. The reference number? Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, no matter what we do, they... <laughs> they they try and stay one jump ahead of us. So, so all the things that 
And I, I mean, I only learnt that in December from this very kind person. And um, already, because I give everything out freely, already they realise, holy shit, that was very good information. I, it, it doesn't matter what I'm saying. Right. If, if before, when you had the number on, the other banks, is <laughs> <laughs> the other banks are still doing it. They're putting the reference number on. So take a photocopy of that and stick it in with the in the bag with the. Okay. Oh, look, you can't buy registered mail. Yeah. Uh, You should know you can't buy registered mail envelopes. Yeah? You, you can't buy registered mail envelopes. You know that. <laughs> Hold on. Could you? Could you? Could you? You can't buy registered mail envelopes, guys. No. Eh? No. I know, I know where to get them. But anyway, you never take the customer. Co oh, do you want a photo? Oh, sorry. You never take the customer one. You want the A. And and. And, and they say you can't buy five. Which one do you say? Which one do you say? <laughs> Thank you. See, the top one is customer copy. Why do you want to be? Oh, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. We'll come to that shortly. Um. Sorry. A is the um, is the highest position. It's the highest position. I think that's. Woman on top, is it? No. Sorry. Yeah. So. You can't buy five cent stamps, apparently. You, you, you can't buy five cent stamps. You, you can't buy five cent stamps. Just, I, no, I've given so many away. That's all I've got left now. Yeah, bloody. Yep, yep, that'll work. It's not like unemployment, that's, that's not working. Well, the prosecutor is please Phil. A, a prosecutor? Yeah, oh, sorry, I used the wrong word. Pros prosecutor. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Persecutor? Yeah, no, sorry, oh. yeah, persecutor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, prosecutor. A prosecutor has placed a bet with the registrar and the registrar will accept his bet and that's all it is, is a bet that he does not know his rights. So the prosecutor will go into court knowing that you do not know your rights. If you knew your rights, you would write a letter and it would be gone before you got to court. So several years ago, probably oh, three or four years ago, several years ago, three or four years ago, a young lady from um, Brisbane rang me from the court and she said, Bill, I've been following your advice, YouTube advice, and said, the judges throwing me out of court. I'd, I'd never met this lady before, but she, the judge has thrown me out of court and told me that I must get a lawyer to represent me. <laughs> so she said, what should I do? And I said, oh, look, I'll give you, give you all my 20 years experience in two minutes. <laughs> 
So I said, there's only one thing you can do that I can tell you from this side of the Tasman. And I said, go into court and say to the judge, Your Honor, I've just got a question for the persecutor. I said, that's the only thing I can suggest you do is go into the court and ask, say to the judge, Your Honour, just got a question for the prosecutor. I know what your role is. I think it's a sausage roll. But <laughs> just need to make sure what the prosecutor's role is. I said, are you an agent of the Crown? And he, he stood up and says, yes. And she said, well, in that case, I guess I am the principal. Would you settle and close this matter now? And judge, get out of my court! <laughs> it's that simple. You go in there and you argue and carry on. I'm this and I'm that. I'm not, that's a, that's a fiction. I'm the living man and I'm this and I'm that. Has my voice gone up a couple of decibels? <laughs> okay, it's all argument. The moment you argue, you've lost. She asked a question. I keep saying, ask questions. The moment you ask a question, they're in default if they don't answer. What are, when they don't answer, what has happened? Silent acquiescence. Okay, so that's what a persecutor's role is. Okay? I think you just set me up for that. <laughs> I, I, think you, you, <laughs> I, think, I think you set me up for that, didn't you? Now, the question there you mentioned that like, um, you're an um, agent of the Crown. Yep. No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter a difference. What are they doing? If they if they're interacting with you, they're coming in as an agent. Okay. If they couldn't access your trust account, they would leave you alone. Now you can do that, and I did that for many, many years, up until 2019. Why I was untouchable was the PPSR. Okay, I first registered on the PPSR in 2003, and I showed the people of New Zealand um, through seminars what uh, the PPSR and how strong it was. And um, 2006, I got bankrupted by inland revenue. So <laughs> I gave the official assignee, a copy of my PPSR filing. I said, good luck with that, brother. <laughs> couldn't touch me. They couldn't do a thing. They could not enter my trust account because I had registered a lien on the PPSR. I'm bloody miles ahead of everyone, mate. I mean, people hadn't even heard of the PPSR in 2003. So 2006, I got bankrupted. 2008, because the PPSR only goes for five years, I forgot to renew my listing. I was having too much fun and I forgot. <laughs> Bloody sex and drugs and rock and roll, I tell you. Anyway, they entered my property and went through me like a dose of salt. So I lost everything. No, I didn't. Still got, still got my life. So that, that was it. But so you can stop them entering your property on the PPSR. But in 2019, after being on the PPSR for um, all those years, they suddenly said, you got a frivolous and vexatious um, listing on the PPSR, so we're kicking you off. And I went to rejoin, and the only way you can rejoin now is through the real me, which is not the real me, it's the artificial real me. 
So, so yeah, I've always been way ahead of them, but then they eventually catch up with me and um, kick me in the yeah. So you still roll with our peach juice bottles? No, no, because I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Um, I'm not going to go in through the real me, okay? Because the real me is not the real me. Now, I, oh, I did try it. <laughs> you know me, I'll try anything. So I went down to um, uh, AA, not Alcoholics and not. Uh, oh, I can see how you think. <laughs> You got smarter this time, didn't you? You moved over. <laughs> I went down to the AA and I got my photo taken. <laughs> and they said, right, we need your birth certificate. And I said, well, I've, I've, got, I've got this one. Yeah, where is it? I've got this one here which is an authenticated copy of my printout. And it's a certificate because it's a certified true copy. You never guess the number. 6668.2. Oh. <laughs> oh, the mark of the man. Don't ask questions. <laughs> anyway, I gave them a copy of that, and they said, "But that's not a that's not a birth certificate." I know. But I said, "You got a photo of the real me." <laughs> okay. So they accepted my authenticated copy, and they accepted my filing for the real me. The trouble is, if you go in with that you're suddenly alive. So it got rejected by people higher up the food chain. I try everything, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just a matter of not being afraid of them. Knowing that it's a piece of paper, they can't do anything to me until, until you realise that it's only a bit of paper you're fighting. Fight it back with another bit of paper. The pen is mightier than the sword. Forget the phone. Statue? Oh, sorry. Some sit. Some down. And rise. Up. What's that? What is that? What is that?
Okay, so what they're, what they're telling us in that clip, one of my favorite movies actually, Pirates of the Caribbean, what they're telling us is that everything is upside down and back to front. Okay, so when you, when you go through law school, although not everyone got taught it, <laughs> they asked you to stand in front of a mirror and put your right hand up. In the mirror, it's the left hand. Try combing your hair, those of you who've still got hair. Um, it's back to front. Everything looks exactly like you, but it's a mirror image of the truth. So what you believe is reality is not reality. Now, it's just a shame. I showed a couple of people um, the unmasking, um, the lady who takes the mask off. and I mean, they come right down these um, latex... Um, or silicon, I think they are. Um, sorry? Yeah, they're, they're not real, okay? And so, like, at the moment, you know, the, um, the, the demented basement dweller, they reckon there's three people um, playing his role. Probably a couple of people playing the Queen's role. And... Um, there's at least one man playing um, horse features role. Um, <laughs> okay, so we don't know what reality is. A lot of it is going to be revealed to us. But the great unwashed out there, the ones who haven't, the ones who are going to be stuck in the 3D for the rest of their lives, they form another timeline. We go off on a different timeline as the volunteers. And you guys, as the volunteers, will go off on the new timeline with a thousand years of peace. Okay? So, another part of the process that we're using will be a certificate. Now, government or the, the, the corporation that masquerades as the government can only see certificates. So a written assurance or official representation, another interesting word, representation, that some act has or has not been done or an event occurred. So the birth certificate is telling you that an event has occurred. The printout is not a certificate. So was that an event that occurred? Pretty sure it was. But that's the official entry into their record books. So entry, by entering our property, they have taken over our property. And at the bottom there you'll see also, see also affidavit, birth certificate, license, permit. When, you, um, when you're dealing with councils and things like that, they say you need a permit for that. Have a look at what permit actually means. You need to make a... What happens when you're submissive? What? No, when you're submissive. You accept you accept whatever's coming your way when you're submissive. I beg your pardon? Yeah. You're rolling up. Take me. Okay. They give it all away when you actually look at words. And so what I'm trying to do is I know a lot of you skipped, skipped the lessons at school and just went to eat your lunch. Some went to sell drugs. It's amazing what comes out when you talk to people. <laughs> 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 
And I'm not looking at anyone <laughs> when I say that. <laughs> okay. So what I'm trying to do is teach you to look for words. Realize what the words are and how powerful they are. What's the most powerful word I've given you today? Uh, yeah, someone, someone got it over there. Principles. Principle is the highest, okay? That's the highest in rank. Stipulation would be another very, very good one. So what I'm trying to do is once you understand what words are, now, I love doing this. <laughs> Have you ever lost anything? Have you... Um, um, The word. <laughs> don't, you, don't you hate it? Um, have you suffered any damages? Have you suffered any damages? You have. That's what suffered means. The judges love pulling that one on you. You've allowed damages. He'll sit up with a big smile on his face and write it down. Good. You may have been harmed and wronged, but you have not suffered damages. Because you won't get a thing if you've suffered it means you've allowed it. I bet you they taught you that in law school. <laughs> oh. Someone. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. So when you learn words, the sword is mighty... The pen is mightier than the sword. Yeah. So we bored shitless yet? Okay, the 10 commercial maxims at law. Now, I told you earlier that the maxims at law, now you can search. Oh, oh. These are the most powerful, the maxims at law, except if you leave them in italics. So on any documents that you write, you must put them in upright language so that they're not cursive. In the laws of commerce, the eternal and unchanging principle, different spelling, principle of the law are, a workman is worthy of his hire. In other words... They cannot come into your property and steal your money. They cannot tax you. They cannot tax you. <laughs> A workman is worthy of his hire. And if you go to the Wages Protection Act, you will see that they are not allowed to deduct any money from you. Look, when, when I, had, uh, I had staff working for me, I would get letters from the Inland Revenue and say, please deduct so-and-so's wages of this amount. I would go out to the worker and I'd say, I've got this letter. They want me to deduct um, this money out of your wages. Do you agree to that? And they'd say, no. Great, thank you. So I'd write back to the Inland Revenue. Please cough from afar. <laughs> Okay, now, I haven't gone through the whole 10. I'm just giving you a couple here because it goes through um, 
Uh, an affidavit is the truth and the truth stands. But a lien or claim under commercial law can only be satisfied by one of the following actions. Actually, I should just go briefly through it, but I'd prefer that you actually go and look it up because it says an affidavit is the truth in law. An unrebutted affidavit uh, uh, remains the truth in law and an unrebutted affidavit becomes the judgment in law. But here's the trick. It doesn't matter how many affidavits you put in and how many affidavits you rebut, there's one that no one ever rebuts. Sorry? I told you, if you want to get out of the system, look for the forms. The affidavit of truth ain't worth the paper it's written on. Okay? There's only one affidavit that we never rebut, and because that is hidden from us. They never tell us that the process server, when they serve us, writes an affidavit and says, Bill has stood up as Turner. And that is the only one that the judge uses for the judgment because it has remained unrebutted. You knew that, didn't you? It's good when you see a lawyer writing things down. <laughs> they knew that. <laughs> that is the only affidavit that remains un unrebutted and the only one that the judge needs to offer you, oh, this one's going to be, this, this will come up shortly, but I'm, I'm just going to take you down another path. <laughs> okay. The judge uses that as the judgment, all right? But this is what he says. He will say, Mr. Blogs, And then he will pause. When he pauses, and if anyone's watched Victor Borg and he does the punctuation, a pause means a full stop. Mr. Bloggs, you have been charged. So who was charged? Yeah. Not you, Spallus. <laughs> okay, so who is the conviction against? Okay, now you have the opportunity to rebut his presumptions that you don't know who you is. And I've done it, and it works. I said, so where's you? Well, you could. Okay, so you is plural. We're actually going to come to this in a minute. You just lead me off down the bloody garden path all the time. You use follow us, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's how tricky they are and because... They operate on presumptions. They presume that you're as thick as two short planks. And guess what? You follow us. Ah. <laughs> so, Phil, Phil, what is the wording for refuting who is you? Is that simple? Sorry? What, what is the wording for refuting who is you? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, all well, you have to say, well, who's you? Who's you? Who's you? I'd like to say, well, of course, I'll give you an example of how tricky they are. Back in 2005, when I was young, dumb, and full of um, bright ideas, um, <laughs> I, I'd worked out a few of the tricks. And I thought, I'm not the defendant. I know I'm not the defendant because that's a made-up word. I'm a living 
I'm a living being. So I said, uh, Your Honour, I said, look, I've just got to ask the prosecution. <laughs> just got to ask the prosecutor um, <laughs> to point out the defendant. So the cunning, cunning shit, what he did, he put his hands, he picked up the piece of paper and he pointed to my name on the paper and said, that's him over there, Your Honour, <laughs> pointing to my name on the paper. So the next time I was smarter, <laughs> I learned every time I went to court, I got smarter and smarter. And so the next time I went to court, I said, Your Honour, would you ask the prosecutor to put his hand on the defendant? Or better still, I've got a mirror with me. Would you have the defendant blow onto the mirror and fog the mirror? You walk into a courtroom with a mirror and the judge is going to kick you out quicker than anything. <laughs> Where do I get all this shit from? <laughs> it works. Oh, it works. A judge does not want a mirror near the courtroom. No way. Because you just need to go, Your Honour, <laughs> did I fog that? Get the defendant to do the same. Or cough from afar. <laughs> right. Actually, I'm so pleased Lana didn't turn up today. Don't spell it backwards, whatever you do. We normally have one Lana in the room. Okay, number 10 of the, the commercial maxims at law. A lien or claim under commercial law can only be satisfied by one of the following actions. A rebuttal affidavit of truth, not of lie. All you have to do is provide a mirror and a registrar told me that. Not my friendly registrar, another one. Oh, I didn't tell you that. Is that book still going around? Where did it get to? Jesus, bloody sitting on These people over here are... They're going to go crook at you. Yeah. Gee, I don't know. I've got to bloody show you guys up. But in there, you will see something that I did years ago. Once again, I actually take the time to go and look for things. Now, okay, I went on to the court website. Or as Jeremy Clarkson says, I went on the internet the other day. Oh, not many petrol heads here. <laughs> you don't rate Clarkson? Shit, he's clever. He's very clever. Anyway, I went on the internet the other day, and this is what I found. I found the court's website, and I went on to the court's website, and it says here, courts have a wide variety of roles, including enforcing the criminal law, resolving civil disputes, upholding the rights of individuals, ensuring that government agencies stay within the law, and explaining the law. So what happens was, I, this is back when I was young, <laughs> I put something into the court and this registrar who was a right, um, not very well liked down in Tauranga, I can assure you. She said, I cannot file this. I said, why? I cannot give legal advice. So I'm pleased you said that. I said, I've been on your website and it says here that you must uphold the law and explain the law. Well, I've never seen a registrar go grey. She went grey. Her hands dropped to her sides and from that moment on, she was my bitch. <laughs> oh, sorry, did that, did that slip out? Sorry. No, honestly, she left three months later. She was gone. I had uncovered the court system. They changed the website two days later <laughs> and, and hid it away, but I found that again. And they've since hidden it away again. Okay, but 
from that moment on, whenever I went into the court, they would come out and explain the law to me. Not legal advice. So, Liz, you'd know the difference between unlawful and illegal? I'll, I'll cut it short. Unlawful is against the law. Illegal is a sick bird. <laughs> Sorry. Just, you've got to take the piss out of them. I mean, <laughs> they've been taking the piss out of us for years, so I'm doing the same back to them. So, Okay, now, if you have a look at the last one there, what is that word? Where did we come across that word earlier? That's in our letter, agreement. So we came to agreement because of the stipulation. Okay, bills of exchange. Now, I explained that all letters are only bills of exchange. And in them bill is a bill that is or on the face of it purports to be. Now, in the letters, you are going to see on the face. And you are going to wonder, where the hell did Bill get that on the face? It's from the bills of exchange because we're dealing with bills of exchange. So, we take the words out of legislation on or on the face of it purports to be both drawn and payable in New Zealand. So, this is very... Oh, that was the other deal there. That one... Okay, word search. These words are important. Misrepresentation. And to the lady who was worried about misses and married and that, no, you've got to be a miss. <laughs> Sorry. Deception. Fraud. These words will nail them. Okay, and we're going to find these if we do a search. I really do want to get on to letters because I think it's, um, we've, we've done this, we've done the date of born versus date of birth, and that's, once again, this is coming up. Ah, uh, oh, look at that. What have I told you about the queen? She doesn't exist. Kingly office was abolished in 1649. And have I not told you all the way through that it was just an office, that it's just they're only agents of the crown? Every king had his own court, and they had the jester. Is that the court? Jeez, I love computers. You only punch the information in once, don't you? I had a registrar in... I've got most of my information from registrars, but I had a registrar in Tauranga Court I went to put my seal onto an affidavit and she grabbed it off me and she held it like this and said, this is my court. This is my court. That is a venue. And you will note the Masonic steps. One, two, three. And if you go to the Auckland High Court and stand up on the balcony, you will look down and you will see the checkerboard there. It's a temple, a Masonic temple. But the court is the paper. Now, some people are very good at writing, how many pages was it? 14 pages? For 14 pages? If I can't do it on one page, it's not a bill of exchange. That's why government departments go onto the second page just to put yours sincerely and their name. And they space it out, double space it and everything so that it goes over onto the second page so it's not a bill of exchange. 
I've told you, everything is a bill of exchange. Okay, so I do everything on one page. And then I put my stamp on the back. I'll come to that anyway. Okay, court summons. We're going to go straight past that because I... Um, Sorry? Stamp, five cent stamp. You know those five cent stamps you can't buy? Okay, so Matthew 5.25, agree with thine adversary quickly whilst thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. Okay, jurisdiction, right, right at the beginning of the very first Matrix movie, there's the, uh, the cops have all swarmed down there to the, the lady, I forget her name now, but, um, you know, the kung fu lady cl could climb the walls and kick shit out of guys. And he said, the FBI arrived and he said, don't give me any of your, this is my jurist bloody diction bullshit. Okay. Jurisdiction is, it is the authority, capacity, power or right to act. The only way they can get jurisdiction is if you give it to them. That's the only way they can get jurisdiction. So what, what they sometimes will do is they'll say, right, we need your shoes. Why? Well, you've got laces there. You might hang yourself. Well, I don't see any laces. But anyway, they'll take things off you and then they'll say, now we need you to sign for your property. Your name is the property. So when you sign, you have given them jurisdiction. So when I'm advising anyone, if they're stupid enough to go to court and not do a letter, because some of them want to go and fight in court for some strange reason. And I'll say, look, if you're going to go to court, we're your oldest pair of jandals and nothing oh, – well, no, pair of <laughs> – sorry, I'll correct that. Pair of shorts and, and have nothing on you. No, no phone, no, no, no food, no pets. Oh, sorry, that was a song. Um, so when they say, oh, we need your jandals, yep, take them. Because you can hang yourself with your jandals. No but you can bitch slap um, with them. So anyway, when they say sign for your property, no, no, you can have them. You can have them. I don't want them. Now they're in a bit of a bind. Oh, no, no we've taken your property. We need you to say, no, you can have them. I don't want them. <laughs> Go in and bare feet. Can we take your toenails? No, no. <laughs> the only way they can get jurisdiction is if you sign or allow them, because now you're understanding them, standing under them, okay? You can see the naughty ones, the ones who are going to be going to court soon, writing hard out here, and it happens to be ladies. <laughs> What's going on, girls? <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, here, here, you can put this back in there now. <laughs> God, she's good, yeah. mate. Jeez, I, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> okay. Now, if we wanted to, now I give you. I take this out of their legislation and I give you all the, all the outs that they cannot get out of because under statute they're bound by law. So the Reciprocal Enforcement of Judgments Act, if you have <coughs> got a judgment, which you have through... What was the word? Come on. Contact. That was close. Contact. Sorry? Through contact. No. Sorry? Getting late. It's getting late. No, I'm not now. 
you have got a judgment because you stipulated what the facts were, that if they didn't agree, that you had automatic judgment. Now, if you wanted to, I don't have to go this far, although I have done this. The first time I did this process was when I had a judgment against me um, from the Tauranga City Council for not paying my rates. They got judgment. Bay Corp did every dirty trick under the sun. Wouldn't accept my registered mail envelopes and everything. But anyway, got judgment against me. So I wrote up my own court, delivered it to the court. I didn't even register it. I went and delivered it to the court the next day with my judgment and the Reciprocal Enforcement of Judgments Act. Okay, you don't have to go this far because all we're going to do now is just write a certificate. Um, and unfortunately, but if you use that, uh, oh, right, yeah, this, this is really important. So I will go through this. Now, if you go on, go online and search, <laughs> search for the Banking Code of Practice, just be careful you put a B there, not a W, but... Um, <laughs> Okay, can you, can you, <laughs> I'll sit down so that, so that people can see, I'm, I keep standing in the way, and the poor old cameraman's having a job keeping up. <laughs> okay, we, us and our means your bank, and you and your means you, the customer. Okay, once again, they're, they're diminishing our status. Okay, the bank is your set of K by trust. But by saying we, us, and our means your bank, and you and your means you, the customer, now everything they say, you will agree to this, you will this, you will that. Now, when you know what you will means, you have given them power of attorney because it's by your will. And there was only one... I read every bank's loan agreement. One of them spelt it out really good, and that was ASB. They said, you will give us power of attorney. <laughs> power of attorney to access the trust, whereas the other banks just put, you will do this, and you will do that, and you know, it, but everything was done by your will because under the 1835 uh, Wills Act, Everything is done by your will. So if you're going to write a last will and testament, I would advise not. I would advise to just do a codicil. Okay, we, us, and our means your bank. Sorry. Okay. In the letters you will see that we have capitalized the W, the U and the O. So now they become proper nouns. We all know what a proper noun is, especially those who went to school to eat their lunch. A proper noun is a real noun, a real person. Okay, so by capitalizing we, us, and our, not not I, I, I. When we capitalize, we, us, and our, it puts us back into our status. So everything about the letters that I'm writing for you is about your status. Take I out of your language. And if you watched the Pirates movie, you wouldn't want to use I because he licked it and stuck it back in. <laughs> okay, so an abstract noun, you cannot see, you cannot hear, cannot smell, cannot taste, cannot touch. Okay. So I'm just showing you there are other types of nouns. You're going to have to be quick. You're going to have to be quick. Uh, <laughs> okay. Proper noun, there we go. 
proper noun. A proper noun is a noun that refers to a particular person, place, or thing. In the English language, the primary types of nouns are common and proper nouns, with the former term referring to things that are generalized and the latter referring to specific named things. Proper nouns begin with a capital letter. Little tricks. Okay, stamp duty is really important. On the back, oh, we'll come to it, we'll come to it. Consideration. Now, I did touch briefly on that by putting the $5 into your bank account. Okay, a certificate. I showed you what a certificate was earlier. That was before lunch, so you've probably forgotten. But, um, ah, indenture. I know some of you have got dentures, but I'm not being... In that, in that there... May I, may I, for one second, I'll show you what an indenture is. Now, I'm sure all the, you people who do know, uh, here we go. So what we do with a certificate, thank you. Okay, if you, if you go online, and look at the uh, wakaputanga, you will see that it's got crazy cutouts all the way around it. That's called an indenture. So I don't know whether you can see that. Can you see that there? So if I put that together, it is identical. Now, if you give them a certificate, can you see that? Oh, am I in the way? Can you see the cutout in the corner and, and down there? Okay, so I've used pinking shears. I'll pass them around. So what you do with your certificate is you do it on A4, cut it into A5. A5 is half A4. Gee, I'm smart, aren't I? She's your father, very clever. <laughs> but when you cut them the same, they know that you hold the other half of it so they can't play any tricky business. And you also put your stamp on the back there. So pass those. No, you don't go on. Pass them around quickly because we're running out of time. And Okay, so the indenture is a crucial part of it so that they know that you know. Okay, when you put an indenture on, they know that you've got the other half. So if you send them an original copy... They'll hang on to it and say, oh, no, we never got that. So we're showing you with the consideration. Consideration is mean, means a monetary sum or some type of consideration. Okay, so when you put the $5 into the bank and use the, um, the courier bag number as the reference, now we've paid our consideration. Okay, now, so there we go. On the front of the document, top right-hand corner, we could put one dollar. Now, in case you're unaware, not many of you would remember because most of you are a lot younger than me, but we used to have pounds, shillings, and pence as a monetary system. But we also had a weight measurement system called pounds as well. So a pound was a weight of silver. In America, a dollar is a weight of silver as well. It's a weight measurement. So in America, a unit of silver, a unit of silver was payment. But then in 1933, it all changed, and they took the bottom of the U out, and people still thought it was the same thing, but it's not. Then, later on, 60s, they changed again and just went to that. That is not a sum certain. A sum certain, if you write a cheque, they've taken cheques out now. Oh. 
I'm getting high as a kite. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Some certain, back in the days when we had checks, you used to have to write You used to have to write one dollar. And then in a box, when you have anything inside a box, it doesn't appear on the page. So if you have a look at that, you will see in the on the front page there, it's got one dollar. People say you can't buy one dollar stamps. Get off your asses. And have a look, because you can buy those. A lot of these things are hidden. A lot of these things are hidden. But anything in a box does not appear on the page. Anything in brackets does not appear on the page. The judge cannot see italics. So they trick us with little things, but they don't spell it out. Otherwise, they're going to give the game away. How do I find out these things? I'm a nosy bastard. It's called four players rule. Here we go. Four play rules. Any document, given it's got to be written on that page, if you find boxing or anything else, it's excluded. It's a different box. You know, you, if you're charged with $1,000 and box that, you again, who's you? And then without, it's not on the same page. It's got to be all on one, one page, like Bill's getting out. Okay, so on the back, we're going to pay our stamp duty, which is five cents. We're going to put the date across at 45 degrees and sign it. Now, unfortunately, at my final uh, workshop a um, couple of weeks ago, I, I had my, um, yeah, my postmaster general stamps, but... Um, um, someone thought they deserved it better than me, so, um, <laughs> so not to worry, um, you know, they deserve it. <laughs> um, so I have all my own stamps because of my own court. I have certified true copy, my registrar stamps. I have all my own stamps for my own court. I never get any of their stamps or seals on my documents, the moment you do, you have lost control of it. It is now taken over by their court. Okay, so when you, when you put the date across like that, you've got to put a squiggle on it. The squiggle is showing the date that that stamp was cancelled. Okay? Now you've paid your stamp duty. And how I found that out, I went into court and I put my, put my documents up before the judges back in the days when I was young. And judge looks at it and then he turns it over and he says, I don't see how this is going to help you. Is there anything on that page? No, it's an inchoate instrument. Bills of Exchange Act, inchoate, incomplete. So when you put a stamp down there, you will see the judge, you'll say, hmm, oi, <laughs> and he'll put it back. Because now he's going to be done for mail fraud, which is how they got El Capone, was mail fraud, not taxation. Okay, so if he interferes with the mail, he's in deep doo-doos. Five cents on the back. Yeah. You can put what you like. It's your court, mate. Do what you like. But if you've got it with the words, now it's a sum certain. So, and I'm sure that you're writing these things down, sum certain. I'm certain you are. <laughs> so, Phil, are you saying just on that postal stamp, just from the previous one, you'll yes. mark the little five? Sorry? Is that what you're no, 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 no. You just write the date. You put the date across at 45 degrees and you put your signature on it. 
which means you've cancelled the stamp, so the stamp can't be used again. But also the date, the date that it was cancelled, the date that it's cancelled shows them. Now it's, now it's not an inchoate instrument. Okay? So the judge cannot say, I don't see how this is going to help you. Okay, there's the um, indentures there that I was talking about. Now the big secret, this is the, five, oh, the courier bag. Now you need to get the number of the courier bag. And the consideration is the $5 you bank into your bank account. And you use the courier bag number as the reference. Now, I have covered that before, but there you go. Um, we've got a young lady here, very naughty young lady. <laughs> <laughs> Being had with willful trespass. No, yeah, take John Henry out and put um, just your first and middle name. Sorry? Yep. Sorry? Would she want this on the record when we do her behaviour? It's up to you. Do you want them yeah, I to... Mind. I, I don't mind. It's fine. Thank you. I think that's um, very admirable, and someone who's losing, someone who's losing their fear, which makes it really, really cool. Okay, uh, right. What's the person who laid the charges? You got a f Constable Stu Smith. I'm going to be in. Sorry. Constable Stu Smith. Oh, we've actually got a name here, Constable Stu Smith. Okay, so put the um, put all the details in there. This is really good because um, I'm a hunt and slap typist. I hunt for the letter and then I slap it. So this makes it really easy when someone's proficient with typing and um, they can do that. Do you not put the instead of the title, you put students? Uh, you're still on common law, mate, aren't you? So <laughs> so come on, stand up and tell us what you're going to change. Wondering, what? On the letters, that, do you put the title of that? Because that's the title, Constable. Everything. Good point. The only valid point you've made today. So. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally up. So, so what we'll do is we'll put Stu Smith. So, trading as Constable. So, go down one. Go down one. Take the constable out there. So trading as constable. I'm shaking. Okay. Thank you very much. That's um, so right. Okay. So take take that one up above it off. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Click. Here, here. There's a mouse here. So just. Just go back to there and click and then backspace, which is that one, yeah. That's the one. Look at that. Uh, is, that is that where it is at the Police Infringement Bureau? Yeah, it will be. Okay. Okay, dear. Okay, so, so now. PRN number? Yep, yep. Now, okay, so, so go backspace and we'll do that one. Re notice. Okay, what's the number? 16535 630. Okay, now we'll, what we'll do is we'll center that and we'll bold it. Okay, now Stu Smith. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We'll go. I'm going to show you a little trick here. Copy. Go to edit. Find. Replace. So we'll put find. Paste. Okay, now put Stu Smith there. 
So, so it's probably Stuart Smith, isn't it? No, he, he it's, it's Stu Smith. Okay. Okay, so just put replace. Yep. Yeah. Replace all. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Click OK. And then close close that box. Uh, where is it? There. That's it. Now it brings it back. Okay. Just say B team workshop. Okay. Uh, no, this correspondence, but the claim is against you and the venue is on the post. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Put, your, put your name in there. Just Linda Ann? Uh, no, uh, put it exactly how it is on there. It was uh, Richard. Richards. Okay, so now earlier on, we told you who you was. Okay, so on here we're saying the correspondence is addressed to, and I told you how the courts will always put the surname first or the father's name first, Richards, Linda Ann, but the claim is against you and defendant. They'll always claim that you are a you or a defendant. So... We're rebutting that, but the claim is against you and defendant, which on the face of it would appear that someone is trying to make a... F oh, where did we get on the face? Where did we get on the face? Where did we get on the face? God. Oh. Come on, th this was only... Um oh. I heard someone over there. Yep. Well done. Thank you. Bills of Exchange Act. Okay. On the face, it would appear that someone is try, trying to make a fraudulent claim for unsolicited goods. Did you order a trespass notice? Did you ring Amazon and say, hey, look, I want a trespass notice? No, you didn't. Okay. So, oh, just go and do spaces. <laughs> okay, scroll down. You can do it with the mouse. Yeah, yeah but okay. Okay, um... Just take that claimant and put, is Stu Smith? No, no, it, keep going, keep going, keep going. Is Stu Smith willing to take the stand to testify? As the crime second and the crime tracking professional finds the crime, finds the crime, is Stu Smith not bound to uphold those acts? Take claimant out. No, no, no. Yeah, the one above. Claimant. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that right? You could take claimant out and put Stu Smith in all of them. So, yeah. Okay, so we're addressing the man. Although he is making a claim, we are still going to address him as the man. Um, is Stu Smith in breach of Section 240? Take without. Okay. Now let's go down to the notice. Okay, so now earlier on I told you that all we needed was two questions. Oh, sworn to uphold. So take abide and to sworn to go from required to abide. Sworn to uphold New Zealand. Oh, no, and by as well. Is Stu Smith sworn to uphold? Sworn to uphold New Zealand statute. Okay, New Zealand legislation, that'll do. Okay. Okay, no, no, go back up, go back up there. Wait, stop there. So we asked the two questions Is Stu Smith an agent of the Crown? 
Is Stu Smith sworn to uphold New Zealand legislation? Now, all these, all these letters are in or on, will be on your stick. Okay? It's up to you to fuck them up after that. Oh, this is going to be a real good one, eh? Yeah, this is going to be a real full uh, name of the agent. Yep. Not just the first. Type well, of the you know, in a lot of cases, they're not going to give it to you. Do you know why they're not going to give it to you? They don't want to give it to you. No, they, they're liable. They know they're liable. They know that they can be done. <laughs> Hey, Jabber Jaws, sit down. God, I'm, I'm trying to answer questions here. Now, the reason they won't give you your name, their, their name, why? They know their rights. They know their rights. They know they don't have to give you anything. They don't have to give you anything. They know their rights. They're not required. Do they have the right to remain silent the same as us? Do they have the right to say anything to incriminate themselves? No. You don't have to incriminate yourself. They know that. They, they're told that they do not have to give their name. The same that you don't. Okay, so the questions, okay, so if we look at, to clarify the situation, would Stu Smith kindly respond to the following questions to above within 14 days? Now we've, the guy who was up here, we've given them the time. They must respond within that time. If they don't, then we can nail them. Delivery is from the moment it goes across the counter. Yeah. Delivery, you have changed, you have, what did it say? Come on, delivery. Possession from one person to another. It's from the moment you get wheeled into the ward is delivery. Okay. Is Stu Smith sworn to uphold New Zealand legislation? Yes. You've now shown him what his status is. Do we have to say, look, I'm the principal? No, we don't. We've told him what his position is. And the people who open these letters is not Stu Smith. It's the people in the ivory towers who do this. Okay. Would Stu Smith kindly forward a copy of the contract we signed to engage his services? Okay. So this purposely capitalised, so we. Okay. As the Crimes Act 1961 and the Contract to Commercial Law Act 2017 binds the Crown, is Stu Smith not bound to uphold those acts? Okay. By putting the not in there, what have we done? A negative averment. Can you answer a negative averment? No, they've got to go silent. So, okay, they're bound to uphold these acts. So when you have put them into their status, and by putting them in their status, they know that your status is higher because man is higher than corporations. And they're only agents for the corporation. Now they know. So now you quote them what their company has told them they're sworn to uphold, and they must uphold it. It's that simple. Okay. Should this not be... Oh, I didn't... I'll tell you what. Would you just step up for one second? Spell Spell here. Word spell. Okay, so... Um, Contracted Commercial Law Act 2017. Can you all see that clearly up there or do we need um, glasses? Okay, so if we go to section 40. Oh, 
Relief may be granted of mistake by one party is known to the other party or is common or mutual. There's another section there, but this is the one that we're going to use. Section 40, to have effect in the place of the rules of common law. These are the only times I'll mention it. It's within their acts. I stick to contract. Okay? And of equity. Who was talking about? Oh, no, it was... Um, um, uh, governing the circumstances in which a party to a contract may rescind it or treat it as discharge for misrepresentation. What are they doing when they come after... Um, why did you put Linda there instead of Stu Smith? <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So Linda Ann, they're trying to misrepresent. Um, yes, Stu Smith. Yes, Stu Smith. Okay. So, so scroll down a bit. It's quicker on the. Um, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The correspondence is addressed to Richards, Linda Ann. Are they misrepresenting Linda Ann as the trust? So can that contract or that bill of exchange be rescinded for misrepresentation? It's that simple, guys. It's that simple. Anything that they send you is a bill of exchange. So we'll go down a little bit further and just make sure I've got everything there. Uh, okay, now we give them notice... We believe this is a fraudulent claim for unjust enrichment as there does not appear to be a sworn affidavit to substantiate the charge and do not believe that the evidence provided would satisfy all elements of the charge or a plaintiff in this matter who would be willing to take the stand and testify to the veracity of the charge. Now, every charge has elements. Most have about five elements. So if you, if you get caught for, its, uh, for speeding... One of the elements is that you were driving. Another one of the elements is that you were a driver. No, no, no. These are the elements that they have to prove. Okay? <laughs> Bloody hell. Okay, they have to prove that you were driving. They have to prove that you are a, a driver. They have to prove that you have a driving license or that you need a driving license. And they have to prove that you were exceeding the speed limit. So there will be more elements, but all those elements must be proved. Can they prove any one of those? It's only dummies who accept that they were speeding, the presumption that they were speeding, and the presumption... You're flashing red at me now. Okay, all right. The presumption that you don't know your rights, we just proved that. <laughs> okay, so when you take those presumptions out, oh, just with the cease and desist, put a, a hyphen in between. So close them up and put a hyphen in between. The cease and desist, yep. No, 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 just, just go back and put a hyphen in. There we go. Yep. And between the cease and the and. Yep. Um, now, that's equals. Okay. In the, uh, so, any further attempts to extort money will require a letter signed, oh, signed by Stu Smith, under his own full commission. Yep. Okay. By Stu Smith. So you can see why you can't make a template. Everything is different, and you have to go in there and correct these. So hopefully by the time you've watched um, this um, video production a hundred times, you'll... <laughs> under his own full commission. Change your name down there. Now, have you got a stick? Yeah, you, you, you don't. You it's do. not even actually my surname. 
Yeah, but you do not, you do not want the name of the Father anywhere near the document. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So many, so many gurus out there are telling you, you've got to do this and you've got to do... I'm giving you facts and figures here. You show, me, you show me in their legislation, which I have shown you all the way through their legislation, proved it in their legislation. If you can find that in their legislation you have to have a thumbprint, go ahead and do it. I, it doesn't worry me. It's not my court. It's your court. Thank you very much, um, Linda. And, and Oh, did you save it? But sorry, guys, we've run out of time. Um, we're, we're, we're paying 300 bucks an hour for... for <laughs> 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 Thank mm -hmm. you.